Excellent, excellent, excellent. So, for everybody who's watching, thank you for joining us today. We're back with another session of the City of Gilgamesh. Um, today, we are short our favorite little goblin with a psychotic demon arm. Uh, Doc is not feeling well today, so he will not be joining us. Um, so we're going to kill gobs off in the first five to ten minutes because I don't feel like playing her. And we'll kind of go from there. Um, but let's go ahead and dive into our game. So when last we saw our heroes, Nate the Human Ranger, Gobbs the Aarakocra Warlock, Otho Kent the Lizard Folk Life Domain Cleric, Tala the Half-Orc Druid, and Abraham the Human Wizard. Um, our friends having successfully uh, made it um, out of the Great Library uh, and made it to the river, and after having an encounter with a group of bounty hunters, um, they decided rather than heading towards the city itself that it was time for them to proceed to Helmbrum uh, to try to assist in the rescue of the previously captured Katarina that they had met. Um, upon getting to Helmbrum, uh, they found a scene of utter chaos and destruction um, as um, Katarina's wife had made it there ahead of them, freed her, and they consequently burned a bunch of stuff to the ground on their way out of town. Um, as our group began to wander through the town, they made an unexpected discovery uh, as they found Tala's previously thought to be dead brother. Uh, who was helping clean up a building. After a long emotional conversation, Tala and the group kind of got away from the commotion of the town. And when we last left them, they were sitting on the outskirts of everything, um, drinking, having a conversation, and dealing with their thoughts. And that is where we will be picking up for the week. So, you guys are still sitting under the tree. Um, I'll say... Maybe let's do this. Let's say everybody, it was kind of late-ish evening um, when that was happening. You guys watched the sun go down, and you guys all just kind of snuggled down and and ended up falling asleep under the tree. Um, let's see. As you awaken, Tala? Yeah? You have the message? Uh, on your phone that I've sent you previously. Additionally, I want you, as soon as you, because you're the first one to wake up, because, again, you, you being in puppy dog form, uh, did not do much of the drinking and whatnot, so you wake uh, early in the morning. Um, you're back in your normal uh, half-work form, and I want you to give me a perception check. Okay. Um, perception. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, as you sit up and uh, you know you're there, kind of leaned up next to a tree, written near Pip. Pip is asleep. Uh, he's kind of leaned forward, hunched forward, sword in his arms, um, and is doing his thing. Yep. So yes, I did remember that Nexus. Good call. Um, but yes, I, I noticed that very specifically when I was looking through things today. Um, but as you're sitting there, um, you know, Pip is, a, is asleep, but you can see him starting to stir a little bit. Um, the two things, a couple things you notice immediately. Um, number one, uh, your cell phone, you can see that you have the text message. Number two, there's mm -hmm. a crumpled wad of paper sitting in your lap. And number three, the hair on your right side is in your face, which is strange because you always have it pulled back in that little ponytail. And when you reach back to your hair, you realize that little ponytail is gone. As in so somebody has cut off that lock of your hair. They just, they literally just chopped up one of my buns in my hair yes okay uh i honestly don't know how to react to that <laughs> pure unadulterated uh... rage 
probably, but I don't know who what did it. I doubt it was any thing? of you. There's, 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 yeah, there's only one thing around that I would possibly blame for this. Uh, <laughs> I think in in her head she would indeed just go like, "What the f fuck? Who? What?" But also because she has that text message and she sees it's from her dad, mm -hmm. she doesn't immediately like scream about it or whatever. So I think she would first just try and not think about that and just read the message first. Okay, the, so that's the, what wadded, I'm gonna be doing the wadded up right piece now. of paper? The... No, first the text, and then I'm gonna go to the notes. Okay, alright, so the text contains the information that I've already sent you. Mm -hmm. Which is what I'm reading. Okay. So as Tala's reading that, uh, Nate, you would be the second one to kind of wake up. You see Tala stirring. Um, you would notice immediately just because you're always watching her. Her right bun is missing from her hair. Not that it's taken out. It's just her hair's been cut. And that bun is missing. Um, you'll notice she's got a wadded up piece of paper in her hand. And she's reading something on her phone. Um, I will say in general, everybody kind of starts to stir at this point. Um, so uh, let's see. Otho Kent, how heavily would you have hit that alcohol bottle that night? Well, Otho Kent's not a heavy drinker, but he would have gotten at least a little tipsy. Okay, give me a um, constitution saving throw, please. Oh, yay. Abraham, how, how hard was Abraham hitting that bottle? Abraham was providing an opportunity to de-stress. <laughs> he himself was just going to lightly sip on his to the tone of the group. And if the group wasn't drinking into it, he was just going to keep it light so he wasn't uh, the odd one out. All right, go ahead and give me a constitution saving throw as well. Paolo, let me know when you make it to the paper note. I've just um, made it not with to the end of that Sorry text. That. Oh, no. All right, uh, Abraham, um, you definitely tried to pace yourself, but it's been a while since you've had anything this strong because you mm -hmm. guys have just been trail rations and water so it does you're a little groggy in the morning you got a bit of a headache the sun's trying you're like why can't the sun go back down for like five more minutes uh, so nothing <laughs> nothing majorly bad you're just feeling it a bit uh also can't you're just fine all right gobs is still snoring she's just she's just sleeping beautiful Where's your hair? So yeah, I, I just... Uh... I... <clears throat> don't know, it seems to be cut off. You guys didn't notice anything during the night, did you? Uh, no. <sighs> He's I wiping know. his face. I ain't making coffee. You don't think it was the arm, do you? What arm? No. What arm? Me? Eh. He's like bleary eyed and he's like digging for coffee. <laughs> You're able to find your your trail trail uh, kettle. Canteen. Kettle. Yeah. Thank you. That's the word I was looking for. Uh, and coffee. So hey, you sit it on these coals. Me and you just stronger. Yeah, stronger. Definitely stronger. If you didn't do it yourself, I only have one suspect right now. And that would be... Roscoe, was it you? Building a nest, are you? Hmm? That edgy guy who kept looking at us from the party we foiled their plans of. Hmm? Oh, the cat. <laughs> hmm. Scans? Whatever his name was. I doubt a tease would have the balls to do this. Well, if that it was, was a skill. tease, he's a dead man. <sighs> well, 
Well, nothing to do about it now. <clears throat> Does the note say anything? Uh, right. Note. I'm going to read the note. Does it say who is it who it's from? Because <laughs> I know I can guess who it is, but Sound Scream. Is AFK. Nah, he sent me something. Oh no, my microphone is muted. Um so yeah, I've sent you the, the message. Uh uh -huh. and no, they did not sign it. <laughs> but to 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 not to go as punny as as I am intending to, it's very, very sharply written very cat scratch <laughs> if you get my meaning uh-huh i'm gonna crumple it back up and throw it at pip yeah i will put it in the normal chat because i assume the note's going to get passed around yeah so just to read it out loud it says i have your scent now I'm sure at some point your mouth will piss off the wrong person and will get the contract to come find you. I look forward to making you shut up when you inevitably <laughs> refuse to be quiet. Be quiet. Aha. Abraham, if we ever see that cat again, can you do that thing with the magical missiles? Oh, I kill on sight. I've already planned on it. So if you'll excuse me, Ovkan's got to take a picture of the note, just in case. Abraham's taking that whole drone strike mentality a little too strongly there. <laughs> he's, uh, he's true neutral, but he has his rules. <laughs> so you guys all kind of get up. Uh, eventually, Gobbs does wake up, fold up her stuff, and... Um, she's just kind of, kind of falling around Otho Kent for now, um, and but you guys get your breakfast camp going and all of that. Um, Nate makes some delicious oatmeal that nobody eats. Uh, let's see. I eat oatmeal. Oh, Abraham needs his fiber. He eats it. <laughs> it was a joke. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Suddenly, <laughs> everyone wants the oatmeal. <laughs> Retribution. I never did not want the oatmeal. Excellent. Justice um, for Pippin! <laughs> <laughs> but you guys are able to eat your breakfast and have have a good time doing so. Um, what What's next? What would you guys like to do? Well, we accomplished nothing. Ah, we helped some people. We helped some people and we found a brother, but we never accomplished anything. What's the next step is kind of the thing. We need to know where to go. That is a great question. We could well, I think I need to have another right chat back. with the tease. What was that? Of course. Sorry. I think I'm going to need another chat with the T's. We can definitely take that into consideration. Um, I promise I won't happen. get that mad again. For now, um, I do believe I still have plenty of rations for if we need to travel. Um, Abraham, Nate, is there anything you need if we need to travel any great distances? Um, no. Well, some more rations would be nice if we haven't used all of them. Well, if I do check, 
if Kent looks into the bag of holding. I do still have rations for... Well, for the fiber bus, for... Let's see... For... I still have 225 rations in my backpack. Should be plenty fine. Indeed. Hmm. I did forget to get more feed for the horses. So that's probably something we should get done. Uh, did you manage I to work out need... the deal with... Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Go on. I was just about to say, did you make the de make good on the deal with uh, the cobbler? The cobbler. The shoemaker? Uh, no, uh, it's what Nathaniel called one of the horses. Ooh. I did pay off... Um... pay off the uh, the cobbler, yes. Well, all right. Just making sure. Uh, I keep looking for my bag. You know, I am running low on some medicinal herbs. Before we travel on, uh, Tala, could you help me find some more? Uh, sure. I can help. Great. Uh, Ovkin's gonna grab some, just like 10 gold from his uh, belt pouch and say to Nate, can you get some uh, food for the horses? Maybe some fruits or some vegetables too, so we keep them in good spirits. Uh, you'd have to give me a check for that, Nari. What kind of check would you like? <laughs> uh, just like a spellcasting check. Whatever your spellcasting ability is. But yes, to, just to clarify for you, Nari, that doesn't... Wow, that's an yeah, awful yeah. roll. Um, yeah. You're able to replace the bun with just vines coming out of a flower that's in the in the other bun, uh, but it's just vines. You weren't able to make it pretty. I'll try that again tomorrow or something, but yeah. At least it doesn't look like I only have half a head of hair. Right. Um, so yeah, it's not hard to find a general store in the town. Um, you're able to pick up the appropriate amount of horse fodder. How many days of fodder are you looking for? Well, I'll leave that decision making to Nate. If he uh, <clears throat> was willing to get some food for the horses. Yeah. Right. Um, would be. Uh... Two weeks worth. Uh, two weeks worth would run you about a gold piece per horse. Yep, five horses. All right. So, while Ofo Kent has dragged Tala off uh, into the forest, all under lonesome, all according to his terribly late plan. So, a lot has been going on. Yeah, you don't say. Quite a bit. And Gobs did tell me you wanted to talk to me. So that's why I dragged you away right. rather rudely. Um, right. 
sorry, I did not expect that to be right now. I didn't expect it either, but uh, I will not lie to you. What happened yesterday has kind of expedited my urgency on this. I don't know what happened. I just kind of lost control, I suppose. Definitely. That would not be an understatement. You got absolutely furious and looked like you were about to kill your own brother. Scared it. It scared me, okay? I... I actually thought about it and that scared me. If Abe hadn't been there, then... If Abe hadn't been there, it could have been a possibility. Sure. But as it stands, it didn't happen. Granted, just merely having the thought of killing a loved one is unsettling. It's not pleasant. It's not something you want to have. But sometimes the mind goes to terrible places, especially when it's stressed. I do not blame you for getting angry at your brother. I can understand why you did. I am a third party, so I can only say I found it a bit excessive the way you did it in. But I, well, saying I understand might be misguided, but I think I understand. It's only been a couple of months with emotions. I'm still getting used to all of this. Yeah, well, emotions suck from time to time. True. I have definitely been angry and disappointed over the last couple of months, but... I've also experienced joys and certain things I've never thought possible. Some satisfaction, definitely, in a lot of things, my work. But now I'm talking about me. That's not why I'm here. Well, it's partially what... You know what? I am waffling. I feel like there's something you want to get off your chest that you just want to talk about in general. There's something eating away at you, and I'm I want to lend an ear, if possible. And even more help, if that's possible, and if that's what you want, of course. Well, I just don't really know how to... start, I suppose. Because if I say it out loud, I am afraid it will become real. Hmm. Well... Is to do with what I saw in the storm. Mm. From what I could see on your and Nathaniel's expressions, those were quite horrible, the experiences. And with Garbs, it was mind-boggling. Mm. Though I will be honest, sometimes her stare is so empty, I wonder if there's anything in there. But alas... Even if you believe it becomes real when you say it, the fact that you're keeping it in your own head still makes it real to you. Sharing it is not going to make it any less or more real, but it will invite my perspective on it. All right, then. Um, I woke up in my room. Mm -hmm. And my mom was home, which is strange in and of itself, because I haven't seen her in years. Well, that is definitely odd. She... She asked me whether I was going to go see the boys, and she had readied some 
flower baskets for me and I was mayor. I was mm -hmm. greeted by everyone in town and eventually it dawned on me where said boys were in this case, meaning my brother and Pip. So, um, I went to a section of the graveyard in town for the fallen heroes of the Battle of Mayfrost. And my father was there, um, buried next to my brother. Uh, who apparently also died in this battle that happened, and Tim was there too. He was gone, Otho. Mm. And apparently I wasn't there when it happened. If I had been there, I... Don't blame yourself. You? How can I not? I know it's hard, and the visions of the storm were very real. For some, they were different. For me, they were quite pleasant, but there's a very important thing to remember. From what we've been told of the storm, it is a possibility. But. You have gained a glimpse into what can happen. It have given you in it has given you insight on how to avoid it, how to prepare for it. I had told myself it couldn't be true because my brother was already gone. So when I saw him yesterday, that I don't know this. Awful thoughts went through my head. But if he wasn't there for that moment, something might be different. Pip might still mm. be alive. Mm. So in some regards, you were even willing to trade your brother for the potential safety of Pip and Nathaniel. It was terrifying. It still is. Oh, I... it... Trading one life for another is never a fun exchange to make. And it is a dark path to walk down. But you didn't. You still haven't done it. And with the insights of today, you're not going to. When you said you weren't going to do the same thing as yesterday, I believed you. Because if you had wanted to finish it, you, well, you would have done so while all of us were tipsy and were asleep. When we couldn't stop you, but you didn't. But you also got to remember now that you've seen what can happen. So if you can change something, I mean... If we need someone to not be killed... Not to toot up my own horn, but you know a pretty good doctor... I can't lose him. I really can't. And we're not going to. So the universe has showed you some fate and you just decide to buckle down to it? I, I don't blame you. It's a rough one it's shown you. But the Tala I know would spit in that face and say, Ha! As if you're going to get to take Nathaniel from me and my brother and my father. Especially because of some of the things in that view were decent. What it sounds like your father and your brother had made up, and you'd somewhat at least made up with your brother. Though, depending on circumstances, it might have been worse, but you can change it. You can prepare for it. You've told me. You can tell the others as well. 
You don't think we would no, stand? No, I, I can't what? tell anyone else. Well, why not? Because it hurts too much. Alright. I might be a bit pushing this. I do apologize. But you've told me. You think I'm just going to stay away now? You have an idea of when this happens, I assume. And if you think that I'm not going to be there to fight by both yours and Nathaniel's side, then you are very, very wrong. May 16th. May About 16th. Eight years from now, I believe it was. Details are fuzzy. Just... Well, that gives us a timeline to work with. So, if you don't mind me asking, why weren't you with Nathaniel when it happened? Well, there was this dwarven lady that completely freaked out in anger yelling I was off with the who was it the, the Fay of Summer it was I was out doing something and I wasn't there. I left him. Mm. Well, the one must... person who is always there for me. Always. He couldn't go because his mom was sick. And I... I just left. I, I left him behind. And... In that vision... You why. left him behind. I can only assume, from what I know of you, there must have been some reason that you thought justified you just leaving. So I'm not going to judge you for making a decision, because I believe you did it to try and help. It's what you do. You never hear sometimes can be a bit absent-minded in your righteousness. Your heart is still in the right place. You try to help people. You just need to focus it differently. Like I said before, it's not set in stone. If the details are fuzzy and the events seem not to line up with what we're currently experiencing, perhaps we've already changed something of the outcome. Maybe. Just... Please... Please don't tell the others. Especially Pip. It is not me who is to tell this. That would be rude and would be breaking my doctor patient's confidentiality. You'd be able to sue me for everything I owned. I like my coat. It's a nice coat. But alas, it was a terrible attempt at a joke. You are changing what's going to happen currently. You know it might happen. It's not, like I said, not set in stone. So you can change it. You will change it. It's not going to happen. Fight whatever this blasted fate is, and I'll stand you by your side in it. We will protect Nathaniel even if he doesn't know it. How can you be so sure? What do you mean, how I can be so sure? I have hope. And I believe in you. I believe in Nathaniel. I believe in Abraham. And I even believe in Gobbs. That they can be so much, that you can all be so much more.
just as the sun always rises at dawn. So will your potential. So even if you don't believe in it, I will. Thank you. You're welcome. If you ever need to talk or anything, feel free to say so. You can just tell the others to scram while I need to listen. They can find ways to occupy themselves. They're all adults. Also, I'd like to get back to camp now, because I believe I stepped on some poison ivy and I don't wear shoes. Poison <laughs> ivy. Yes. It's definitely itching up a storm. What? Not funny still? Hmm. I have to work on a better sense of humor. <laughs> Perhaps I can implant one of those. Well, if you really want to see whether you've got poisons... Just carry on a leg bone. It's humorous. <laughs> <laughs> I can't detect that. And possibly uh... get rid of it. Awesome. So as you two are finishing up that discussion and beginning to head back to camp, I need everyone's favorite perception old man check. wizard oh. to give me a perception check himself. Um, As you're sitting there, uh, you know, you had Roscoe fly up and you're sitting there drinking your coffee. You hear a slight rustle from your bag. Your bag of important things. There's something moving in there. Uh, I grab the bag and I get ready to punch whatever it is. Okay, so you're holding an action to punch whatever's moving? Yeah, like there's something in my bag, I'm just going to assault it. Okay. <laughs> um, as you open the bag... You just oh it's just like, wait no 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 like there's like I thought you were saying like I'm, I'm like not paying attention and something's and somebody's digging through my bag I mean it's like I'm, no, no, I'm expecting to look over and see a hand in it your bag is moving oh like an intruder like inside there's something's inside of it ah that's moving okay Let me that's different it. okay I think my bag is rustling I'm looking over there there's gonna be like a hand like somebody's going through it like some scant came up and was robbing me uh, was what I was expecting. Um, so, I, I, I grab the bag mm -hmm. in a way that I'm clenching the opening closed. Okay. So, like, I, I'll, even if it's, like, I roughly grab it because speed is of the essence in my, and then you just, like, the hell? What is this? As, as you're holding it, you can feel some more motion, and something hits your, like, elbow. Something very hard and round is wiggling side to side in the bag. Um, hang on a second. I have a solution for this. Does it, does there an, I'm going to be guessing there's an impression of how big the thing is. So mm -hmm. what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my manifest mind. Mm -hmm. I'm going to open it up a little bit. The manifest mind glows. And it's going to go into there and it's going to see what's inside. Um, as soon as you open the bag just a little bit, you mm -hmm. immediately catch a gleam mm -hmm. of uh, something. What color would that be? Um, a bright yellow 
crystalline shaped thing is oh, in there. Oh, that's oh, 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 uh, emergency, emergency. Guys, get back here now, emergency. You don't recognize the voice that's yelling at you guys to get back there. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm out of character. I have a medical thing. I'm trying to not use my jaw in a certain way so it affects that's my mo old man voice. Okay, that's perfectly fine. You guys start hearing uh, Abraham yell emergency over and over again. Emergency, emergency! We have emergency back at camp. Hurry! Apparently Anybody? nobody else is concerned about that. Ooh, okay. Are we back? Right. Yeah, hurry back. Okay, responses from the other players that are in this game. All right. Nice. Hey, good job, guys. I was typing it. Oh, were you? Oh. Okay. Um, I'm assuming everybody's back. Yeah, everybody comes rushing in, and you see Abraham kind of panically holding his bag. Tala, come here. You, specifically, come here. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Baby. Can I open it up? Um, as he flips what? open his bag, you see a large, crystalline, egg-shaped, um, yellow, crystalline egg, right? Um, very cloudy in nature at this point. And this is something you would notice immediately, Abraham, when you first got the egg. You mm -hmm. remember how it was just like looking through glass? It's very yeah. cloudy now. Mm -hmm. And as it wiggles, you can see that cloud kind of shift on the inside. So yeah, baby, and I hand it to the druid. It's a crystalline dragon we found. Yeah, okay, Colin, this is, they never mentioned this to you whatsoever as part of their adventure that they stumbled across the corpse of a uh, topaz dragon, and in the middle of it was a last remaining live egg. Gem dragons are incredibly rare. And topaz dragons are very... Um... So, Tala... In all your expansive studies of fauna, believe it or not, gym dragons probably aren't on that list. <laughs> but what I do need you to do is I need you to go ahead and give me a nature check. And based off that nature check roll will determine what you know about topaz dragons. We're going to infer from egg re reared uh Oh, wait. Okay, like, just a, just a heads up. Throughout my games this week, I have not really rolled that well. Um, so, uh, here's hoping Guidance. this is the first good Guidance. roll ever. Guidance. I'll tell her <laughs> Does all, that even work? I will tell her all I know about Topaz Dragons from the all arcane right, perspective. So let's hold for a second then. Abraham, hmm. give me an arcana check. Just straight Arcana. Alright. Oh. Tala. Wow! You get to make your survival check with advantage. Was it in a nature check? Or, yes. Nature check with advantage. Wait, my survival's higher. Fuck. No. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's nature. It's nature. <laughs> nature. Alright, guys. <laughs> default. 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 This, this is just god damn it I have inspiration can I use that the inspiration can be used in whatever I think I, yeah, I, I on, honestly I just advantage. want to roll again this is is it is it still with advantage if I re-roll that then yes you're using an inspiration oh, really? it's okay. just the mulligan you roll you just re-roll you do the roll Okay. Uh, hiya. There you go. Hey. Okay, and and roll Look your at the other one being a four again. Yeah. Four. Four. Give give us your guidance. Uh, 
Yay! 20! Awesome. So you're actually going to end up with a 25 because of the level of the Arcana roll uh, that he gave and all the information he's spilling out to you. Not only did it give you advantage, it gave you a bonus to the roll. So good job on that roll. Um, so... Thank the Lord. You, you start thinking more so about the large birds that you've dealt with. Um, one of the big struggles with a larger creature is that the eggshells are usually very thick. Um, so what you start to look for is you sit down um, uh, so you sit down, you take a couple blankets to nestle it up. Um, you know that the eggs are shaped in the way they are because the head is usually towards the thinner part and you're carefully watching for a crack to begin to form. And what you're going to do is you're going to gently, um, uh, does anybody have you, um, you need something to help you crack safely, but gently encourage the crack once it starts. Because of how thick the larger creature's eggs usually are, sometimes the babies will struggle and they'll start to suffocate um, once they start to have... I have woodcarver's tools. You have woodcarver's tools? I have one of those little yeah. handles for taking reflexes. Okay, so you've got chisels. You would have had a hammer in there. Are you, so what are you wanting to use? Shatter! Wait, no. <laughs> Kidding. I would think that um, Scott, what's it called again? The thing to chip away it would. I freaking forgot the word, even though he just said it. Chisel, chisel. It okay. has like a sharp edge, and I would more so use that to try and cut rather than jab it in there. You can use an arrow if you want. I think the uh, I think the chisel is a bit more sturdy. Okay. So uh, a few moments after you've got it wrapped up, you start to see this hairline crack start to form right at the tippy top. <laughs> so because you start to see that crack, you use your chisel and you very gently with your hammer just tap, 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 tap to encourage it. But again, because of the really high roll you got, you know all you're wanting to do is to help encourage it. Encourage it to open, right? Once it starts to, like, you start the crack, and then the, the baby is able to start maneuvering the crack itself, you kind of stop and you let it do its thing. Um, you also know, uh, especially with dragons, they usually have a, a, a film around them. Um, that's related to the elemental nature of them. Um, and with one of the things that um, Abraham told you that's kind of got you worried is topaz dragons, they don't breathe fire. They don't breathe water. They breathe decay. So... Oh, Fun. Yeah, so so like their breath weapon, it's not I breathe on you and you get acid on you. I breathe on it, and if it doesn't make the save, it literally decays and dissolves as if it had been there for a millennia. So yeah, they're they're not. It's very entropic with their with their thing. It's dehydration, yeah. from what I'm reading. It it it, it yeah, it's desiccating. It, desiccation is what it is. Um. So, so it it does necrotic damage. It reduces your strength. It's yeah, they're yeah, they're yeah. very very nasty to be nasty. on the other side from. So there's some concerns there. So how would Tala, between her nature knowledge and her knowledge of the dragon, what would you do to prepare for potentially a film of death and decay being on this baby when it hatches out? Um. Let's see if I have anything. Don't, wait, I have something I need to read whether that helps with anything. Uh, no, that just helps with AC. Um, um, I don't know. I'm thinking. Ah. <laughs> Are you seeing my messages? I mean, I uh, I am not because my laptop is slow with... There it is. One sec. <laughs> so, you're, we're anticipating this thing's first breath is going to be just straight dehydration? 
Um, not so much its breath, but like, like if it was a fire dragon, there would be a layer of lava around it, like the embryo sac. Oh, kind of thing oh, of it. Yeah. So when it comes out, lava would spill out of the air. Ah, uh, like that. So okay. When, so when this comes so out, there's going to probably would... be liquid death rolling out of it. Yeah, so. I would. I would ask someone to uh, see if they can get like a tub of water or something, so I can just put it in there, so it can be washed. Oh, use up the whatever's dehydrating it by giving it something to dehydrate. Okay. Yeah. To again, rehydrate. <laughs> again, it's it's not dehydration per se. So it's it's literally their breath weapon is a yellow. It's a yellow rolling gas of necrotic energy. Ah, okay. But and I giving it personally something to absorb it. This Water is very good at absorbing that kind of stuff. Not a terrible idea. So, I mean, I... in character, who are you going to do, do all of that in character for me? Now that you have an understanding of what you want to do, let's roll that out in character as you're helping this baby hatch from its egg. I'm going to need clean cloths and some warm water, preferably in a tub. Um, Pip, can you get the water and Is there... maybe Otho, you can get some cloth? I'm sure you have something in your bag. I have tons of bandages. I have shape water as a can. That works. Since I, I lived create... in Neep. Mm -hmm. I have create water as a spell. There's also a creek Beautiful. just, down, just yeah, to like just, 50 feet from you guys. So I, I take a shape water and I just constantly move it. Okay, where are you uh, moving it to? And... Then... Uh, to uh, wherever Tala needs it. Tala, tell me where you need all this water. We have two ways of making it, two ways of getting it. Yeah, you now have a large ribbon of water floating through the air from the creek all around you. I mean, we kind of need something to put it in, you guys. Not just the water itself. All right, I'll go find something. I'm going to put down a healer's kit, and then I'm going to run off and try and find a tub or something. A bit All right. Now? Green dig a hole. Both those options will make the water go inside of it, because bedroll gets wet, soaks up all the water, you know, and mm. then a hole in the ground still goes into the ground. Just constantly shower it with water. Just give it a give it a water bath the entire time it's being born. Mm. We need I, a tub. Uh, <laughs> so Otho, you're running around. Give me a hmm, what kind of check would be searching for something specific? Investigation, Investigation. check? Yeah, my brain wasn't working. Guidance. Nice. You're actually, as you start to panic and get on the fringe of town, you see a, a um, half oven woman. She's actually hanging laundry, and she's got an empty uh, wash bin or wash pan uh, out there. It's one of enough. those. It's kind of one of those oblong ones, right? That you carry with two hands, and not one of the small circular ones. It's one of the bigger ones. Ah, fair enough. Well, I'm going to approach in a decently rapid pace. Oh, my, you're a giant lizard. Oh, well, I'm sorry, ma'am. Uh, so do, do you mind you if I... Uh, who you are? What, what are you doing in my backyard? Well, you see, I'm kind of having a medical emergency not too far away. Um, do you mind if I borrow your uh, wash tub or um, buy it off of you? Yeah, yeah, you can borrow it. Just just bring it back. Why, thank you very is much, ma'am. Is everyone okay? Don't worry, everyone is. Okay. Are you... Thank you kindly. This is a weird morning. Indeed. <laughs> Ofo's gonna carry it like over his head with the open side downwards, just running like a maniac. All right, so Otho comes running back with the um, uh, with the tub. Abraham is bringing over the uh, water. He's whirling it through the water like a water bender which would make my children happy. Uh, let's see, who else? Nate, what are you doing to help the situation? <laughs> Panicking. 
panicking. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so Nate is panicking. Um, is he running around with his hands in his air like uh, what's his name? The oh shit, that one fat actor. Oh my famous. god, this is just a scene where the dad is in the hallway. Like, oh my god, as long as everything goes well, what if we? Uh... This right here. This is him. That's him. Yeah. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Um, as uh, as Otho gets back uh, and starts to put the tub down, and the tub is beginning to feel the top part of the egg, you start to see another crack that starts to run all the way down to the bottom, and the top part opens up, and a little bit of yellow royal comes out. As it rolls over the cloth and into the grass, the grass just dies where it touches. All right, so with uh, the blanket mm -hmm. or cloth that I had to make it settle, I'm going to carefully pick it up and then mm -hmm. put it inside the uh, tub with water. Okay, and as the tub is splashing over it, you can see the tub hitting it and that yellow kind of feeding into the water and diluting uh, greatly. Um, the next bit of the process takes a little bit as the egg continues to crack. And after about five or ten minutes of the water baths and everything, the yellow uh, stuff stops to come out. Um, and the egg finally completely breaks open. And out pops a small topaz dragon wormling. And to describe what it looks like... Um, it's a very, oh, where'd I go? Where are my notes? So it's the scales, its scales are very dull, yellow orange, and they kind of look cloudy or, or, or filmy, right? Because they're still soft. Like you can tell by the way uh, she's moving, they're very soft. Um, it is a girl dragon. Uh, so it is a female dragon. Um, with that, uh, its wings, like the. Uh, the webbing for the wings is is very very shock white and transparent so like if when she stretches and spreads as she starts to climb out and she pulls out her wings and stretches them it looks like the gems cuz the gem scales are very crystalline in shape Um, they're very crystalline in shape, so it almost looks like bones um, in the wings and the very see-through transparency of the wings. Um, the other thing that you notice is that the spines that run down the back from the top of her head and run down are not actually connected. They are floating in the air just slightly above her head and down her spine and down to her tail. Um, and so there's little spiny gems. They look like crystalline gems just floating over her head, and they kind of ripple and move based off of um, how she's how she's moving, what she's looking at. Uh, she has the brightest, brightest green eyes you have ever seen. It's almost like looking into emeralds. <clears throat> As she looks at you, Tala, in your mind, you're going to hear a word. Do you speak Draconic? Um, no, I speak okay. common or druidic and sylvan. In your mind, you just hear dusk, dusk, dusk. Uh, do any of you guys speak Draconic? Are yes. You? It's saying dusk? It's asking for a dad. No, that's mother. Mother. Parent. Indeed. Oh. Uh, and when it and when she's um, saying dusk, she is kind of reaching towards you, Tala. Well, I'm not gonna refuse a hug from a baby dragon. So she does hug you uh, and kind of pulls up on you. And then she looks over at Abraham. And Abraham, in your mind, you hear Uppsala, which is <laughs> father. Yes. Uppsala. And yes. is reaching towards you. And I go over to it and I pick him up. Her up. Yep. Her. 
Yep, and uh, when she is picked up by Abraham specifically, you notice all the gems that float above her head and tail, her spine gems, just kind of ripple, and they actually start to gleam a little bit brighter. Uh, and she actually curls in deep on Abraham. I uh, bring in the mind as a ethereal trinket for it to mess with. Mm-hmm. Is it really? <laughs> I did not know that. I'm just using a draconic online translator. Leave me alone. Um, so just so you know, uh, just to give you a couple couple things of knowledge that you would have had, which I assume you would have learned not just from that check, but just from reading into them. Um, as a whole, uh, topaz dragons are very chaotic neutral. But that doesn't mean that they're evil, they're not good, or anything like that. They're very moldable, right? Um, you know, some of them are, you know, can be very arrogant. Some of them are just, you know, different things, different, they can be a lot of different things. And with that, one of the things is while they're very entropic in nature, it's one of those destruction is a part of the cycle of creation they they do love creation they do love destruction but they don't do either without purpose right um like they see like oh i have to destroy this mountain to get the materials to build the grand castle right they wouldn't just destroy the mountain they wouldn't just build a castle there's a give a cause and effect to everything um, but that can cause them to get obsessed with either one, to get obsessed with um, things like that. And it's very much in the experiences they have, how they're raised determines, right? Um, some of them can very much get uh, very much to the part to where, you know, they'd like to care for an area. They want it to create. They want it to grow. So those kinds of uh, topaz dragons, when they reach full maturity and their layer is set in an area, everything within miles of their layer will grow greatly and things like that. The other side of it, if they dive too much into the embodiment of decay that they can have, um, it can very much turn into a wasteland of destruction and returning things back to nothing. Um, one of the funniest things about their nature is that they absolutely love the ocean right they despise being wet they do not like being wet um so it's one of those they would want a beach house oh. but they put it on stilts so that they do not see have to deal with the ocean itself right and i just put it in water to clean it right but it's like they're not going to go despite the fact that they are very aquatic they can breathe underwater um they don't like swimming they don't like doing it but they can do it but it's just ironic that they love the ocean they love the salt water uh but they hate swimming they hate being wet and they hate bronze dragons in general but yeah good to know Well now, okay. what are you doing? So, hey, they That's eat fish. And adorable. It eats fish. We need some fish. I'm just playing with it. Got my finger in front of its face. And does that playful tap 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 and a little nom here and there? Hey um, yo. Uh, it, gems. It, it, it does look to the side and it sneezes and when it sneezes just a, a cloud a cone of that yellow decay just poof, fluffs out and a tree falls over and begins to dissolve into dust hey Ooh. okay absorb elements save me <laughs> All can't, right, absorb, can't, can't absorb elements save me oh god if we need some fish I'll go take a swim then I'll be back all right. If it uh, can, is... I will make sure to oh. also have that prepared. Well, can can absorb elements help me? I Capture can... some of the incoming energy. It doesn't, it doesn't, just that's all it says, as far as that goes. It doesn't specify types. It says incoming energy. 
And typically, breath weapons are energy, but this is special. I get it. Yeah. Uh, acid, cold, fire, lightning, all thunder damage. Yep. Mm. It, it would not help you with this one. Hmm. Because it is, it is necronic. It is negative energy. Well, that's still energy. I... Just that energy. The word energy left your mouth. Yes, but absorb elements is looking for elemental energy. It's not. I mean, element. I can basically teach it how to do his breath weapon with the spell Wither and Bloom. I have that. Doesn't help me save myself from being sneezed on. Ah, yes. Absorb elements. My favorite elements of acid and kaboom noises. <laughs> <laughs> the element of the boom bop from the base. <laughs> also, boom as, bop, bop, as, a, boom as a note, so you can factor this in. Um, if the wormling is within 30 feet of you, you do gain a plus one on any intelligence checks and saving throws. Intelligent saving throws. Wait a second. Huh. Now that it considers you an ally. Hmm. So is that with all of us, or just the mama and papa? Anyone it considers an ally. Uh, the two that are going fishing, uh, give one of you give me a survival check with uh, advantage on that. I believe Nathaniel has the better survival. But do I have the better rolls? I'll trust you. Guidance. I don't think he needs it. Neither do I. I just wanted to say it. So... Muted again. Sorry, I was responding to somebody who called me. Um, yeah, you're able to point out a couple schools of uh, just stream trout, um, and you're able to get, uh, let's say, uh, five or six decent sized trout, rainbow trout. Uh, but Nathan Nathaniel directing you, and then Nathaniel, you're like, yeah, there's a, it's a good spot right here. I can see a school. And as you say that, Otho just takes off his coat and just dives face first in and comes out and he's got him in his mouth and he goes, does that walk thing where he spits him out on the ground next to you? <laughs> yes! So, and then he dives back in and gets more. So while he's doing that, I'm assuming you take them, you wash them off because you think that's <clears throat> horrifically gross and then you put them in a little bag or something for you to carry them back with. Good teamwork, Nathaniel. Yep. And um, so while that's all going on, um, Tala and Abraham, you're able to get uh, get her all cleaned up. Um, she doesn't like water, but she's also not. She's very smart um, and she understands, you know, got to get cleaned up, all of that stuff. Um, you rinse out the egg. Uh, the egg is basically just a hollow um, topaz egg now. Um, um. But saving that, yeah. So, so you guys collect the shards. Um, when you're when, when you two are you have your back turned and you turn around, you can see her. She's actually picking up the shards and putting them back where they go, um, and putting them all back. Some some of them, and you do well, you will see this Abraham. One of the shards is a bit further away, and it just floats over to her hand, um, and she puts it back where it goes and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. you're starting to see some of the the psionic nature of her specific species already starting to flex. Yes, uh, a, a large part of what a, a wormling is going through is adjusting to the knowledge it already has. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's um, 
one of the concerns I had was uh, all evidence of its birth. Aside from the death and destruction, which I can deal with in a different way, um, I wanted all evidence of its birth to be removed. So the uh, leaving only behind like the decayed matter and stuff from her breathing, that breath. Yeah. And yeah. once that's done, I want to... You know what? I'm going to solve this problem as quickly as I can. Fireball. Craig and Snake. No, I'm, I'm going to fireball the area. I, I want to. I want to leave no trace Wait, of this birth. I don't want any evidence that something that can breathe decay and necrotic energy was ever here. So I'm going to torch the area, and the fastest way to do so is with a fireball. It, I. So let's back are up for a second. Are you insane? I, are you wanting to do that as you guys are Leaving. done in this area? Yes. Okay. So that's your plan. Uh, that's just my plan because you, you're talking yeah. about advancing on and moving forward. I'm saying, let's let no, it no, get no. clear. What I'm planning on doing is getting rid of the evidence. Sure, sure. Just so that out. Um, after you get her all baked and dried off, um, and she's kind of scampering around, playing with things, she sees like a butterfly, and you can see her, her green emerald mm -hmm. eyes just lock onto those and follow them, and she kind of does the fake. You know, like a, like a kitten would prowl up on something. She starts doing that. She's, you know, she she's exploring a world uh, for the first time. Mm -hmm. It's about then that our two friends come back. Um, Gobs has just been uh, this whole time. Um, number one, this whole thing kind of freaks her out because she's never been around something being born. Um, so she's been very quiet. But anytime you've said, I need this or I need that, Gobs is just there handing you stuff. Um, but she's kind of keeping to herself and keeping quiet and being a bit far back uh, from it because she doesn't, she's not comfortable with all of this. Um, so that's why she's being so quiet. But um, the the our our brave fishermen have returned. Um, are you going to prepare the fish? Are you going to feed them to her raw? Uh, I'm going to see what she likes because typically. Um decaying the fish with their own breath is not a thing they do, and dragons don't typically have... I'll just let her see what happens. Just put the fish in front of her. Just to see if she was interested. And, like, sit there and, like, nuzzle it to her, you know, like, or nudge it to her. It's like, hey, you want some? Some fish? Maybe pick it up and offer it to her. See how she behaves. Um, she looks at it, and then she looks at you, and she t she puts her paw on the, on the fish and pushes it to your mouth first. I like see. She so, Nate. Yeah. Can you cook up some fish for her? Oh, uh, certainly. I uh, hand over the fish. Of salt. So I hand over the fish to Nate for him to take care of. And then I start paying attention to the child. Like, there, there, just a little bit longer. Oopsala. Oh, Oopsala. No. He, uh, no, he's better at it than me. We do things properly. We work together as a team. All of us. Um, you can start to see, as she's watching him cook, you see, like, kind of a a side-to-side -side wave pattern going through the crystals, uh, mm -hmm. her spine crystals, um, which you're beginning to understand. That means that she's curious. Mm -hmm. Wait, and she's, that, she's, just sitting there, she's just sitting there watching. <laughs> to Swedish <laughs> you're gonna trigger Nexus every time you say that word mm -hmm. <laughs> fucking Swinska be fun you have la wheat helmet anyways would Odasa be better? Will that not trigger the Nexus? Yeah. Okay. Nah, it's, it's done now. It's just, it's just funny. Yeah, I'm saying he's just joking with you. Yeah. So, gonna cook some fish. Roll. Kites. But roll what? Would you have Gormand or something? Survival. Oh. Boom! Yeah, 
No, you're able That's to. That's going to be some gourmet uh, fish. Yeah, you do, you do the style where um, you debone one side of it, uh, but you leave the head and tail on, and you do the thick spike thing, and you set it to cook, and you're going to be sprinkling herbs and salts on it uh, the whole time. And then it takes it about, it doesn't take long for fish, especially thin trout like that, to cook. Um, so you're able to cook all of it within about 20 to 30 minutes. Um, after which Abraham, you, you take a bite of it and then she understands and then, um, she gets excited and you can see the spikes just kind of dancing and it's a very, it's not a fluid motion when she gets excited. They just kind of bounce up and down in mm-hmm. different directions and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she, she eats two of the fish, uh, and there she seems go. fairly, fairly satisfied. And then after eating, um, she does walk, uh, back over to the water tray and you can mm-hmm. see she washes her face. Right, so she doesn't like being dirty. Um, um, uh, so she she sticks her face in and washes it, and then wipes it off on the towel. And then she comes and just curls up on your. Uh, she she sniffs around and finds your bedspread, and she curls up on it and starts to go to sleep. She had a long day. Her little baby dragon. Hmm? So it's curled up? Yeah, curled up and uh, has its eyes closed. The crystals, um, whenever they're sleeping, they kind of fold down and they kind of sink back down into specific places on her scales, on her back and spine, and spine so they're not floating when she's asleep. Uh, and she's just curled up and, and napping. I see. Hmm. As a side note, I've been tracking the days this entire time. Ever since you got the egg. And now I can delete that line in my notes. And forget it ever happened. And that's up to you guys. She starves to death in your bag of holding. That's your fault. <laughs> I mean, she's going to die of uh, asphyxiation if we put her in the bag of holding. No, uh... Not this dragon. Does... Well, all right. Well, they can breathe water as well as they get air. Mm-hmm. Well, it's just there is only There's no 10 water minutes or of air. There's no water or air. Yeah, but she could take a jug of water in with her. But it's like pour it down her nose? Yes. Oh, okay. You had to think outside of the water canteen, sir. I can just stick the head out. So... As we begin to leave, you know, I'm going to... Everybody clear out. Don't want anybody knowing that we did this. That we have this. If we can hide it. Are you really going to destroy a part of the woods? Are you really going to give Carrie another piece of ammunition to use against us? He's tracking us. He sees evidence of something like this. He may try to find a way to use it against us. Isn't there another way than destroying nature? Can you find a way to hide destruction? Can you grow it back? If you give me time, I'm sure I can grow it back. We don't have time. It's simple logic. You either take the risk that we reveal the information that we have this, we keep it secret, and we keep it safe. You know, I might have missed something here, but I, what exactly is it we're debating destroying? I'm wanting to destroy evidence of this creature's birth. Look around you. What does this level of destruction, this type of destruction, the disintegration, the rot and decay, the drying? You think a smart creature like Carrie would be able to figure out that we have this now? You think you want to keep this creature safe, yes? We don't want to let them know we have it. So we cover up destruction with more destruction. If you can't grow it back, it's the quickest solution. I do not like the idea of blowing all of this up, but since it is just decayed, burning it will leave it for nutrients as the new life that will appear. One fireball centered here. 20 foot out, 20 foot out. And points in different directions. Minimized. 
We put it out. Shape water. Create water. Okay. Cover the destruction. I'm gonna do some nature magic. I asked her. She said she had to have time. I mean, Tala, if you can see an option where we don't have to, then I'll agree with that. But just leaving something completely decayed like this does look rather unnatural. I can regrow some of the plants. Hmm. Uh, something else I want you yeah, to notice as you guys are packing up. Um, mm -hmm. While the egg wasn't that big, already the wormling has gotten bigger. Just being out, it's like whatever it is with the way that these magical creatures work, just being out and exposed, uh, it's already grown. So it went from that large, large egg size. Now the hatchling is almost um, two feet long in its body, and its tail's almost two feet long as well. Um, yeah, so just as she's laying there sleeping, you can you can almost see the crystalline structure of her scales expanding and everything as she kind of stretches out whatever was keeping her compact in there. Plus, there's something... Let's do this. I, I want Abraham, give me... I'll say, as you guys are something triggers and you feel something magical, and I want you to burn the spell slot and cast Detect Magic. Can't do it, boss. You don't have Detect Magic? Prepared. I can cast it ritually, so it's not prepared. Okay, so let's say you sit down and you ritually mm -hmm. cast it because you're feeling something. Oh, yeah, um, that would happen, sure. So yeah. I actually do have it prepared, so I don't know whether I would then burn the spell slot instead. I think you would feel this as well, just because the essence of what's happening. Anybody who has, who has any type of arcane pro proclivity will feel something. So Nate Ar definitely, right? This is not... Well, his is more planar than it is arcane, but Nate, I would say you sense something as well. Um, there's something happening around just in the general area of the baby dragon. So do you, so let's, so let's back up. So you all kind of start getting this feeling. This happens right after she lays down and goes to sleep. Um, and as you start to notice her starting to grow a little bit. Um, so that's the moment you guys all at the same time start to feel, it'd be kind of like if you walked into a room if you've ever been in a room that had like uh, a Jacob's Ladder or a Tesla coil, a real high power one, just being in the room, you can feel there's energy, right? It's a feeling like that. So as you guys are starting to pack up, Dragon lays down, you feel that crackling energy in the air. How do you guys respond? All right. I think in this case, I would... Cast detect magic. Okay, we so you're casting the test magic. Nate, what are you doing? Keeping an eye on the surroundings. Okay. All right, and then uh, Abraham, what are you doing? If she's burning detect magic, I'm going to. Send my mind up, and I'm going to don't have I'm getting a magical feeling, so I'm going to prepare uh, to cast counter spell. Okay. All right, so Tala, let me explain to you what you see. Um, you're, when you do detect magic, you're not seeing a specific type of magic or anything like that. What you guys are feeling and what you're sensing is magic kind of has, magic's almost like an ocean, right? It has waves, it has currents, it has flows to it, right? Um what you're feeling is like every once in a while you've actually seen in a couple of your travels like pure residuum 
And pure residuum has just those magical waves flowing out of it that aren't really, it's just pure magical energy that flows out of it. You can feel that in its presence, right? You're having that same kind of feeling and it's rolling into the baby dragon. It's not that it's pulling it in, it's that it's willingly going in, right? It's kind of like you could tell the difference between, oh no, there's somebody draining the lake versus a river is naturally flowing that way. There's something about drag this dragon and it could be you know you would know from your check and from everything that you've read dragons are probably one of the most innately magical creatures so it comes to reason hey when they're born magic would naturally be attracted to them and maybe that magic energy that's all around us that is suddenly surging to this location is what's causing her to grow to her natural normal size at birth um what we would consider a wormling size that medium-sized creature that they are because uh, obviously that didn't come out of the egg right a dragon of that side doesn't come um doesn't get that big from that egg uh just out off the bat so you're just seeing the and it's not an a natural thing it's not you don't get the sense that she's pulling it from anybody or from anybody it's just naturally there's suddenly it's kind of like if you were to take a bucket and stick it in the lake the water's going to rush into the bucket because there's now a reservoir for it to go into does that make sense right so that's what you're feeling. It's not yes, a it does. it's not a unnatural, oh no, she's absorbing everything and we're all gonna die thing. It's a oh, there's a natural repository for this energy and it's being drawn to it in a natural manner. There's nothing harmful about this. And you can see you can see as she breathes each breath, she almost stretches in the scales, almost that crystalline if you've ever seen like bismuth grow, it's kinda like that where you see the crystals form on themselves and start to um uh, start I place to my hand on it and let, watch my hand get trapped in crystals. It doesn't get trapped. Your hand just moves further down, <laughs> dork. <laughs> There's a really bad so analogy tough. I almost used there. Remind me when we're off stream. Yeah, don't. Yeah, we're not doing that on stream. <laughs> so, so, yeah, no. But it, it's, it's very, it's very it localized. And... It's not like you're seeing magic pulled from all over the area. It's just, just in this area, the natural flow of magical energy throughout the world is being drawn to her. So, okay. And then oh, after, yeah, after she, a couple minutes, was... it, it does kind of die off as she stops stretching and growing. Um, that energy just begins to flow back like it was. So again, it's literally like putting a bucket in the ocean, right? The ocean's going to fill it up, and then right. once it's full, it just continues moving past it. And she was just born, and she just took in a bunch of energy and grew, mm -hmm. and kind of really, pretty much just grew into herself. Yep, her 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 magical natural reservoir is now full. Um, so it's no longer the energy rushing into that hole that was there. So while it was actually um, going into her, uh, Tao would just stand, stare, and at some point just go, that is, that's amazing. She is somehow just attracting the magic in the area. Well, we, is that what we're feeling? You're... I think so. At least it looks like it. Oh. So what? She's forcing herself to grow up early, or what? I don't think it's forcefully. It looks like it's just naturally attracted to her. I can just see the waves of magic literally flowing towards her. It's it's actually really beautiful. So so beautiful creature as it is and all that. Considering you've been carrying her for so long, Abraham, hmm. shouldn't she be called something? Maybe. Thought about no, it. Oh, not maybe. Well, 
Well, I think you should give her a name. Considering you are her adopt adoptive father, after all. The desire to give her a Swedish name for reasons uh, is strong. <laughs> no, don't do it. You're gonna you're gonna force away every Dane ever. That includes three of the players, of which but, one is currently not present. But, but you I get a say name. That you should just name her Flicka. <laughs> but uh, you know, no, what you're having. just call her IKEA or something. <laughs> What is it, Otho? I was about to say, I will be honest, I never thought you'd get children at your age. I Well, I'm actually uh, a bit younger, thanks to um, our friend. I mean, your body is, your age is still the same. Alan Doriel. Mm. Yes, but still. Alas, um... So while you're thinking of that, uh, Abraham, could you cast prestidigitation on the uh, tray? I need to return it to the woman I borrowed it from. Oh, yes. Cast it. Thank you kindly. I'll go return this. So I'll be right back. That's all for my talk again. Uh, you run back quickly and knock on the door, and she's like, oh! You actually, you're back. Is everybody fine? Everyone's good. Everything went well. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, I'm glad we could help. It's been a rough couple of days here since that crazy woman blew up half the town. Oh, most definitely. I was busy when I arrived myself. I'm a doctor, you see. I gathered you were some type of medical professional with the medical emergency give me your wash tub speech. Well, I suppose you are correct in that. Well, um, do, you, do you need anything else? Are you, you good to go? Nope, that was all. Once again, oh, thank you for your oh. assistance. Well, we appreciate your help. You know, Lathander bless you. Oh, Lathander bless you as well. And she closes the door, and as she closes the door, you notice there's a little Lathander symbol over her door, door frame. Uh, <laughs> ah, that feels nice. Anyways, back to my friends. Whee! Oh, it makes me feel nice. Oh, I'm just burn it all down now. <laughs> Can't get any higher now. Just at the, at the tippy top. Yep. <laughs> all right. So, um, so you, you guys are packing up the camp. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I assume at some point you wake the unnamed baby dragon because she's on your bedroll. On my bedroll. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, she's curled up on your bedroll. Could I, in the and, meantime, um, have tried to let anything grow back? Anything at all? Uh, what magical ability do you have that would allow you to do so? It is a little thing called Druidcraft. <laughs> That's why I'm saying it will take some time. Link, link Druidcraft to me, if you could. Oh, uh, by the way, Abraham, uh, when you haven't been looking... When you do turn around at some point, uh, both Roscoe's are also snuggled up with her sleeping. Da, 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 da. So fine. It's going to make a fire. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, you can maybe fix a little bit of it, but... Yeah, by the time you're done packing, like that 15-foot cone that she sprayed out, um, you maybe filled in about a quarter of it. I'm going to try my damn the still, though. Okay. So, Abraham, when everything's packed except for your bedroll and the Roscoe's and Baby Dragon, and you do see Tala sweating as she's doing everything... Um, uh, as she's doing her darndest to fill in everything. The the grass and everything that was killed and the tree that fell over and, and disappeared, um, they are regrowing as she's doing her thing. Well, 
Oh, okay. Getting uh, getting suggestions all over the place. This is going to take a minute. I, I apparently have to have a vote for the dragon's <laughs> name sound scream. So. No, no, I believe it's your daughter, so you need to come up with it. That's your business. That's my business. I'm just, I'm just getting hit from all sides with suggestions. Yeah, well, did you expect anything else? No, no, probably not. But you are Mama, aren't you, Tala? Uh, yeah, but she's been with you most of the time, so... You have first say here. I see this is what's happening. Okay. Ooh, I have one. I have one. Send, send it to me. My name can be Lemon. When life gives you lemons. You make a potentially catastrophically deadly dragon out of them. Yes. You make lemon Abe. Oh, Chad had a good one. <laughs> when oh, life no. gives you lemons, <laughs> you make lemon Abe. <laughs> oh, oh that made me happy inside right there. Tala is the mother. So, what? Yeah, yeah. For, for the people in chat that are asking, in case you didn't see, um, in one of the early episodes, they were climbing through some sewers in the original starting city of Neep, and they found a, um, uh, a topaz dragon skeleton, and inside that skeleton was the lone egg, uh, which they took with them, and completely forgot about since then but i've been keeping track of the exact number of days because i did some math based off of entomology of different uh animals that lay eggs and the approximate time it would take for an egg of that size to hatch and wouldn't you know it today's that day yep i remember it too that was a long time ago I remember it. I just never knew if it would be brought up. I honestly don't remember it because I haven't watched every EOD. Of, yeah, you, uh, you, you, were st you were still asleep in the Fey Realm at that point. I, I love that. Yeah, I, so. Sindari, you really thought I'd give you a gem dragon egg and I would not bring it back up? The difficulty of finding way. I just didn't want to interrupt the flow of your story. I was like, oh, what about this gym dragon? Oh, I guess he's going to get to it sometime. I don't know. Oh, yeah. If you'd been more focused on it, you would have been able to calculate the uh, time before it. Is that the seen. other thing you were mentioning, like, two sessions ago? When I was asking how many days it had been? Yes. Mm-hmm. Because I knew we were getting close. I mean, I think I've sent, yeah, I've sent three names now. <laughs> I'm, I've, I've got something. I'm, I'm cooking. I'm cooking. Uh, don't let it burn, please. For all of you on, on Twitch and YouTube, uh, it's it's taking a bit, but uh, Centauri is typing in our Discord currently. Uh, I'm, I'm shuffling so... something special. Every day you uh, shuffle. Okay. And we are immediately copyright struck. You know, it takes more than that. Have some firework for crying out loud. 
No, it, it takes more than that to get a permanent takedown. It doesn't take more than that to get a copyright hit. Anyway, here's Wonderwall. Jeez. Okay, so I put this together based upon some suggestions from uh, Nari, Tala, and, uh, you know, can we hear him? Hey, you need your name, you little one. Come on, pick her up off the bedroll. How about, hmm, pretty, like this sun, a flower with the green eyes. It's Maria Liliandra Marisol. Mm. How about that? You like that? You like that little lily, my little flower? Um, you can tell she's pretending to still be asleep, and you can tell, because as soon as she's conscious, her little spikes start to float again. Uh, but she's got her eyes closed, and she's trying to pretend to be asleep. Um, but you know she's not asleep. Um, but she's mm -hmm. she's just curled up and uh, they're doing the the wave. Um, mm -hmm. You you start to yeah as time goes on you'll start to understand her mood based off of how these crystals are behaving because uh, mm -hmm. it's subconscious she can't lie through her scales um, with it. But you can tell with the the way they're doing this ripple wave. So that before it was side to side, this is kind of an up and down kind of wave like you would if you're sticking your hand out the car window you know with the air just waving it up and down it's doing a ripple like that and then and you get the sense that she's pretty content with that really nexus that was your suggestion what hey. no <laughs> Wait, what good i wouldn't oh it's because she has a gas breath huh Oh. I see where you're Ooh. going. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Moving on. All right. She so. is a doll. No, no, Nari. No. Don't you push that joke further because I know where you're going with that, young lady. You behave yourself. We're not Kanye. We get canceled for making this. Doll. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh -huh. We're, we're ending this transmission. So I give her a name. I pick her up. I uh, want to sling her, but she's massive. It seems two foot long. You say? Uh, her body is two feet long. Her tail is also two feet long. Yeah. Yeah, but it curls. Her yeah, and it curls. Plus, you also have two uh, birds on your shoulders. And wings. Yeah, she's got her wings very folded in, though. Okay. So I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm going to um, sling her in a wrap cloth around me. You know, mm -hmm. That way I can conceal her from the outside world. Yeah, she's she going to... She's not going to feel threatened being pressed up against me. Right. Not that kind of sling. Hey, he's next. He's on a. He's on something today. He's he's <laughs> he's he's on a. He's yeah. No, I wish Geneva was what it was. It's we're we're not going to repeat Nexus's joke uh, from chat. There's a reason we have the chat. It's so we can say what comes to our minds that we don't want to get banned for saying out loud. Um, and there's a reason I don't ever show that chat to stream. So, you know, we we pretend to be done. He's done talking to you guys in chat. Anyways, um, <laughs> moving forward. Uh, so, yeah, you guys are able to gather everything up. Um, she's going to peek her head out from time to time. You'll see her little eye poke up, and the, those couple little head crystals will come up, too. Um, it's something that uh, I already... Um, at least the crystals down her spine are starting to clarify and becoming very, very bright. And when they do catch the sunlight, they, they're just a glorious, radiant, glowing yellow. Um, very, very beautiful. It's like, it's, it's when they catch the sunlight, it's like looking at a small star. So it's very, very pretty. Um, all right. So you guys are all packed up and where are you going? Hmm. Well, 
complications being what they are, if you want to talk to your brother, now would be the time, because we um, have to go. Right. Um, I do think I kind of have to talk to him. Do you need any others to come along? Well, at least one of you to keep me in check, I guess. So not Nathaniel. So Roscoe flies onto her shoulder, and the mind goes with her as well. And Abraham stays back with the baby. I wasn't going to let him kill him. Hmm. Just be glad it was Abe that came to us first and not Gobbs. No offense. Yeah, I'm very happy it turned out the way it did. Well, somewhat. Actually, what I just said was absolutely horrible. Anyways, we'll wait for you here. Well, um, here's hoping I can actually find him. Don't really have his address or anything. It shouldn't be alone. It wasn't, uh, didn't you mention Nexus that you had Nate tracking him at one point? Uh, you probably have a decent knowledge of his movements. I wrote it in chat, but I don't know if it sounds from solid. That you'd been tracking him? I didn't want him yep. to leave town. That's what he was saying. Yeah, he hasn't left town. What is tracking him help him locate where he is? Do you have a special ability to be able to detect where he is at all times? No, he followed him around town to make sure he stayed in so town. Smart. I'm just saying, like, could he figure out, like, okay, he moved here, he went here, went here. Oh, it's obviously his house. Yeah, I mean, you would you would have been he would have uh, left after you guys were done. He would have went straight back to the farmhouse he lives at, which is just outside of town on the uh, north side of the river. There you go. Nate knows where he lives. Yeah. Do you mind, um, at least? Walking me to his place? Well, all right. Could probably also correlate if his story is even real about his girlfriend being pregnant, since he's lied about pretty much any everything else. Yeah, he called her. Evie at first, and then it later switched to what was it? I don't even know anymore. Did he refer to her by name? He twice. referred to her Two by name names. twice, and he first referred to her as Evie, and later on referred to her as a different name. Okay. Um, Which, honestly, I think Nexus DM. and I had looked into too much. Yeah, I think that's your DM being stupid. Not so much that he was being duplicitous. Yeah, that's what we made of him. He doesn't even know the name of his girlfriend. He's lying! <laughs> Okay, so yeah, you're able to get back to the farmhouse um, where he's at just fine. So just to clarify, who all's going with you? Is it everybody, or is it... Abraham's hanging back out of sight, so the baby is invisible to very many people, if anybody at all. But I'm sending the mind and the bird. I, I think that Gobs would stay with Abe as well. Yeah, she's, she's distantly curious. Like, the whole, there's a baby and now a dragon thing, it, you can tell it's piqued her interest, but she's kind of scared 
not so much, you know, for herself, but she's like, with without even doing an insight check, you can tell by the way she's always standing and keeping the arm away from the baby and on the other side of her and everything. It's almost like she's nervous to be too close to the baby with uh, with her arm. Not super comfortable with Ex Exodios doing its thing right now. Oh, well. hi, Raphael. My cat just decided to uh, bite my toes and claw my foot. I didn't even know he was down there. Sorry about that. Did you kick him? He no. just wanted to say hi. Nope. Did, your, did your foot move? A little bit. There you go. Uh, uh, he's now rolled over and flopped on my foot. And it's going back to sleep. And now one of my feet is very warm, and the other one is not. We'll just tuck the other one in. Nah, if I do that, he'll get mad. Don't oh, well. You this would, is your life you now. rotten little bastard. Give me that look. All right, so uh, so you're hanging out on the outskirts of town, Abraham, um, and Gob's just hanging out trying to keep a low a low thing do you let her out of the sling at all if she wants to be uh wants to be let free i try to calm her down try to figure out what she wants if she's just wanting it to be out and rambunctious i'm going to have to The concept of baby wrangling a baby dragon seems Oh, You difficult. think on that, because she is going to want to get out and get rambunctious. So while you're thinking about I'm that... I'm thinking about taking her somewhere else, like, let's... away. So think about all of that while mm -hmm. we shift over to the other group and do their thing. So okay. um, so uh, we've got Otho Kent, Nate, and um, Tala. Uh, real quick, Abraham, if you said... If you send Roscoe and the mind, does that mean you need to be able to, you need to be focused on that? Nope. Okay. All right. The so, only thing I need to be focused on is moving the mind as a bonus action. Is it real Roscoe or is it? It's familiar Roscoe. Familiar real Roscoe's Rosco. with me. Okay. Real Roscoe's with you. Good. Awesome. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So, the mind and the uh, familiar Roscoe is flying over overhead. Um, as the other three proceed. Uh, but yeah, you guys get to it and you can see Tala. Um, it's just a, a normal, it doesn't, it's, it's not super fancy. You can tell that it's just, it's, a, it's just a family farmhouse. Um, no professional repairs have been done. It's just, it, it, it's not a, it's not like it's a really rich farmer that he's, potentially trying to get the girls so he can get this really rich farm and get all this money. It's a normal, they live off of what they grow, farmhouse and farmland. You see a couple acres. You see it's been freshly plowed and seeded. Um, little shoots of corn and wheat are coming up. Um, that kind of stuff. So it's, you've seen farms, a right. hundred farms like this back home. And you guys are kind of standing on a little hill that leads down the pathway to the farmhouse itself. Well, that's a nice little place. So, just real quick, I'm going to grow a purple tulip again using the um, druid craft. Yep, so it's just trying to do one flower, it's that. not a problem. Yeah, you get your purple tulip with ease. Beautiful, and uh, then ask the others to hang back. Promise once again that I will try my damnedest not to lose my cool, and then go towards the door and knock. Okay. Um, as you knock on the door, a couple moments later, the door opens, and um, a young uh, half elven woman answers the door. Um, she's, how do I explain this? She's pretty, but she's like a common pretty, if that makes any sense. She's not like a supermodel. She's just like, you know, the girl next door, uh, pretty, but you can tell like she's got freckles and, um, 
some weathering on her skin because she and and you know you can see the effects of her she's been out in the fields uh she she works the yard she can tell like she's got calluses on her hands from uh pulling the ropes on the animals uh that sort of thing right she's got medium length hair um it's kind of pulled back into a braid you know she's not wearing like makeup or anything like that she's just a a common salt in the earth kind of girl um he hello how can um, i help you hi uh my name's Tala. I'm Otis's sister. Oh, mm, mm, um, we call him Edward. Here, um, we try to stay in that habit so we don't right. slip. On on, yeah, he told me that he ran into you, and he seemed really upset last night. And um, but what what do you, what do you want? You're not here to upset him again, are you? I'm definitely not here for that. I've actually come to apologize, and I really just want to talk to him. Okay. Um, she actually steps out and shuts the door behind her. Now, he's told me about his past. I want you to know that. And I want you to know that um, despite all of that, I, I'm, I don't want him to go anywhere. Okay, and it's not just because we think we've got an addition on the way. All right, whatever he was before he turned up here, you know, broke and lost, and he started, you know, he did he did he tell you? Did he tell you that how we met? Uh, he was working. For I my honestly uncle. don't really recall. Yeah, well, he was working for my uncle. You know what he was doing? He was cleaning out the pigsties. Do you know what that is? Do you know what a pigsty is? I am familiar, yes. Yeah. So you know how low you have to be to volunteer to do that. And my uncle's kind of a spendthrift. He wasn't paying him a lot. Okay, barely enough to put pants and clothes on and put food on the table and things like that. And I laughed at him. And he didn't say anything. And then... That touched my heart because I felt bad because I was like, you don't, why would you laugh at somebody? Because he, because he tripped and felt, you grew up with him. You know, he's, he's always fallen into stuff. It's awkward how easily he falls into things. And it was at that moment, I realized something. Do you know why he falls into stuff all the time? Because he, he doesn't have anybody to, to help steady him. Okay. So uh, I want you to know before I let you talk to him that as bad as he may have been, as wrong and stubborn and, and all of that, because he's told me all the stories, I know how big of a jerk he was growing up and even fairly recently. But whatever it was that happened to him that brought him down the river and brought him here humbled him. Okay? And whether you like it or not, I'm going to hold him up and balance him. And I won't let you take him away from me. So talk to him. Say your goodbyes. Say your sorries. You do whatever you want. But my Edward is staying here. Do you actually say that out loud, Nexus? Does Nate no. actually say that? I'm just uh, thinking it. Okay. All right, just make it sure. Just make sure to let me know if it is something you say out loud. I, I would put it in, in game chat. Yep. So this is my home, and that's my Edward. Do we have that understanding before I let you in to talk to him? Tala just nods. All right, then. Well, I hope... I hope after this we can we can be at least friends and cordial because the last thing I want is if I have a baby that that baby should know its whole family, okay? You'll always be welcome on our doorstep if you're coming to visit the little ones. 
Because if we don't have a baby now, we're probably going to have him again later. All right. And from what I hear, you're a pretty fantastic person. And I'd hate for you not to be in Edward's life or in any children that we have's life. Does that, does that make sense? Is that fair? I mean, I highly doubt I'm an amazing person, but fair Well, story. you wouldn't be coming here to apologize to somebody that you feel wronged you if you weren't. And everything Edward tells me about you tells me that you are. But uh, I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead uh, and go get him for you, okay? Okay. Right. And she steps back in and walks um walks you well you can't see where she walks because she shuts the door and um a few moments yeah, later yeah so while while she's inside though i'm gonna just glance back at nate and otho and see how their expressions look well uh, Ofo is going to keep an eye on the conversation happening, but after that, he's mostly going to keep an eye on Nate. <laughs> How's Nate holding up? Restraining himself. There's a yeah. lot of anger. Um, about that that time, the door opens and um, a red-eyed. A tease kind of kind of steps out. Uh, Nate, hi hi sis. Uh, hello, um, you. Yes, he says to Otho because he doesn't know who you are. Otho can just got a smile and wave at that point. He he awkwardly smiles and kind of waves back. Yeah. Um. Well, what? What can I do for you, sis? I'm sorry for how I reacted yesterday. And at that point, she's going to hand over the, the tulip. You always loved the purple ones, didn't you? Mom loved them too, right? Yeah, she uh, she did. Hey, if because you know this stuff better than me, I just, I just do what her dad says when it comes to these fields. Um, if I just plant this over there by that tree, will they grow? Because it'd be kind of nice to be able to look at and remember you and mom and explain, you know. Well, they. They uh, they require quite a bit of sunlight, so. Okay, so so. Probably not underneath the tree. Like is it now? I remember mom and you saying afternoon sun, morning sun, right? Which which sun? Which way's east? I don't. I'm not good at this. Says just tell tell me where to put the flower, please, so it'll grow. Because I. I'll, I'll, I'm, so I was I'm, gonna just take a quick look around and find the best spot for it. Just yeah, there's it a, there's actually a good little little garden with some ornamental flowers already growing in the perfect spot. That would work. Okay, and do I just I just stick it in? Do I bury it? And so I assume you're okay with you kind of walk him through. No. <laughs> Let me help you, and you kind of help yeah. him plant flowers, and it and it brings up memories of when you were really, really little, like when you were probably two or three, and he would have been about seven. Um, this is before mom disappeared, uh, and you guys out in the garden, him covered in mud, and uh, you just copying mom and telling him what to do and showing him how to plant the flowers, and even though he was filthy, how happy mom was to see not just the flower, but seeing you two together doing that. And it, that kind of, that long buried memory kind of comes back to you guys as, as you're doing that. I am, um, I want a very good brother was, am I? 
Was I? Am I? And both. I'm not good at words, sis. You know that. I think it was more that we just didn't understand each other well. Well, that's probably more of my fault than yours, because, you know, before seeing that guy, I mean, he died. Tawa, he literally laying on top of me, died. And I felt it. I felt him stop breathing. And there's just that, that limp, dead weight laying on top of you. It's made me think that that's maybe how you felt about me and how dad felt about me because I'd been so selfish and just focused on, you know, I was going to be mayor and that made me important. So people had to do what I say and blah, blah, blah. And then all I was was dead weight hanging onto your neck the whole time. Right. And then I go off and starts doing my stupid stuff. And then dad leans on you to make you mayor, which I was jealous of because obviously you're the smart one, right? I'm the pretty one. You're the smart one, right? Tala is going to take out her phone, find the text message from her dad and just let it ease read that. Let me reread it to see what parts would have applied to him. <laughs> Typical dad, just being better than I deserve, like he always has been. Do you think the he'd really thing be is, happy? I to always. Speak? Sorry, sis. <sighs> It's okay. it's okay. I just, I always thought you wanted to be mayor, and you apparently always thought that I wanted to. Well, neither of us did. Yeah. Well, I did, but it wasn't for the the right reasons, right? I wanted it so I would be important, so people would listen to me and do what I wanted them to do. Right? Yeah, and I just really wanted to do my own thing. I never wanted to become mayor. You'd make a lot better mayor than I would, though. You really think he means that? You think he'd be happy just to know that I'm tilling dirt in the middle of nowhere on the other side of the world from him. I mean, I, I think good... he would just like to know you're alive and doing well. Yeah. You know, you know, Evie's a good girl. She helped get some sense into me and, Made me smile for the first time since that night, you know? Her uncle's kind of a jerk, though. Do you know how hard it is yeah, to get... Yeah, I heard, uh... ...big crap out of your boots? And even when you do, they still smell. Oh, they I smell. Mean, I mean, I kind of do. How'd you end up all the way over here? That's um quite last a I long heard story. you and Nate were going out to some town to meet some professor guy. Yeah, so I was about to leave when I got stuck in a block of ice. Ice. Mm-hmm. I mean, ice doesn't last long. And he, we, we, we can yada yada over that as you explain, as you guys sit there in the flower bed, as he's, you know, he plants that flower and you grow a couple more and he's, you know, uh, just 
talking to you as he's tucking these flowers in and giving them water and stuff like that as you kind of fill him in on everything you guys have gone through. Uh, Not everything, by the way. I well, leave out Terry completely. Yeah. I mean, obviously, the things you would want to tell him. I'm just not going to sit here and make you role play through telling the entire history of the campaign. That's what I'm saying. Um, yeah. It's, wow. I do have one notion, though. What's that? Uh, that uh, it, I suppose you can call it somewhat metagame, but Tala is going to make a mentioning of. That at one point, Dot was looking at losing two kids. Yeah, I'll um, I'll make sure Dad gets a letter and he knows where I'm at. And um, if Edward Junior is on the way, I'll make sure he knows when. Because man, if I'm not dead, he sure would kill me if he wasn't here when a grandbaby shows up. His first, his first one, first one, right? He kind of looks at Nate and is like, but first one? This will be the first grandbaby, correct? Sis? Yes, it would be the first. Okay. Just just making sure. It's been I think, two years since we've seen each other. And, and Nate looks really angry at me for some reason. I don't... He never... Yeah, yeah. He Honestly, never... can you blame him? Um... I. Maybe not. I've I've drank an awful lot um, since I left home, and I don't remember a lot of things. Clearly, you know what though. And he actually does the side hug and kind of pulls you close and goes. It was worth all of this if it gave me a chance to get my head screwed on straight and have a sister again. Yeah. You know, maybe I should plant some of these blue flowers up by the road. Maybe if mom's out here somewhere wandering around and she sees the flowers, maybe she'll come by. Because are these flowers naturally from this part of, of the world? I don't think I've seen him out here. Maybe that'll, maybe that you we could maybe consider this kind of like what are those things they put up on the rocks with the lights so boats don't hit them? Lighthouses. Yeah, this will be like a flower lighthouse. The flight house. No. 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 Okay. I thought it sounded good. I think you should let the naming up to Evie when it comes to it. Yeah, she's a bit bit smarter than me, which, you know, isn't isn't um isn't difficult. All she asks for me is for me to be loyal and try. And I think I can do that now. I don't think I could have done that before. I think I can do that now. Good to see you, sis. Right. You yeah, guys, you too. Where, 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 where are you guys headed? Headed next? I don't know. We haven't really thought that far. I just wanted to you, talk to you before anything. You do you do you need anything? Um, we can like make you some sandwiches or something. I mean, sure. <laughs> I okay. I appreciate that. All right. Um. Yeah. Well, let's 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 go inside. And uh, you know, I think it'll make you be happy to see that you didn't stab me or turn into a wolf, which I didn't know you could do, and try to eat me. Are you a werewolf? And he continues asking little, um, obviously stupid questions as you guys go in. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Evie is much warmer this time. Um, you kind of get the impression that maybe if you'd looked up 
in the second story window, there might have been cracked and there might have been somebody up there listening to the whole conversation. Uh, so um, when you come you in, don't say. when you come in, she gives you, she actually, if you let her, she will give you a big hug. I think it would be a very awkward one, but she'd allow Evie yeah. to hug her. Yeah. Yeah, because you kind of get the sense that, like, you've made a tease happy, and that makes her happy. So, and she goes in, and, and the three of you, or yeah. does anybody else go in to help with the sandwich making? Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Is anyone else joining? So, so Nate, any any input? I'm sure you've been keeping an eye and an ear and picking up on everything. Um, Otho Kent as well. So as much as it would be lovely to join in, I do not believe it's my place. Okay. Nate, do you go inside and help make sandwiches? Nate is going to look over at Tala or any sign. She would kind of nudge with her head, you know, towards like a come on. All right, so you guys go inside. Um, it's awkward because. <laughs> Because it's your clumsy brother, along with overly enthusiastic half elf uh, girl, Nate, who doesn't really want to be there, and you, who's still trying to suss everything out. Um, a raven sitting on your shoulder. Yeah, and a raven, which is like, yeah. oh, the bird came inside. I guess that's okay. And you're in the kitchen. It's a real plain kitchen. It's it's a farmhouse kitchen. It's nothing fancy, but she pulls out. You know, fre bread that's been baked fairly recently. Um, uh, it slices it up, starts, you know, handing out. You guys are making uh, bologna sandwiches, um, and they make uh, eight or nine sandwiches for you. She wraps them all up in cheesecloth and puts them in a basket for you guys um, and, and goes, yeah, that should be good because you, uh, um, Edward said that you guys have like four or five people with you. Um, so... You know, hopefully this gives you something tasty. I know if you guys have been traveling, road rations kind of kind of get old. Um, but, um, and Edward said you guys are going to be heading off and out of town, but you don't really know where. Is that right? And you guys kind of have that whole conversation. And then after a little bit, uh, you guys are done, um, you know, and uh, they give you the basket with the sandwiches and you guys are heading out. Is there anything else you'd like to say before you leave? There is, but I'm thinking of how to put it. If you ever want to come home, even if it's just for a visit, both of you, um, just give me a heads up beforehand. I'll make sure I'm home. Uh, that sounds... Sounds... Perfect. And uh, Evie just kind of grabs onto his arm and pulls him in and, like, we'll, we'll plan on it. We'll see how certain things are developing. And she kind of gives you that knowing nod to you. Um, and uh, based off of that, you know, maybe instead of having... Having Dad come all the way out here to see us, maybe, maybe the three of us. Once we know if there are going to be three of us, we'll uh, we'll take a trip out there. Maybe make this old lug actually take me into the city and show me a good date night for a change, instead of coming around smelling like pigs. Oh, how would I like for him not to smell like pigs? And she just kind of smiles at that. Yeah, I'll send you. I'll send you a Texas, and um, I know I'm not much help, but if you need need anything, right? You you let me know, and I'll do whatever I can. 
You know, I haven't been there much in the I'll past. Keep that in mind. But I'll, if you give me a chance, I'll be there this time. So as you guys walk it's time away, to finally be siblings, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I appreciate you letting me have a chance to be one again. And he reaches out for a hug, but he doesn't like just grab you and hug you. He's like, he's waiting to see if you will hug back this time. Yeah, I think Tala will. And when you do, he just squeezes really tight and you can kind of feel the sobs, but you can tell he's trying not to cry. Careful about squeeze too hard, I might turn into a bird. That would be awkward. And why is this bird now standing on my head? Rawr. 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 Um, That's Roscoe. He's a friend. I kind of figured... Oh, all right, sis. I would tell you to be careful, but I know how you are. And I tell Nate to watch out for you, but I know that's the last thing I need to do is tell him what to do about anything, especially when it comes to taking care of you. And weird lizard guys yeah. seem really happy out in the sun in the front yard. So I, I think you got yeah, it Yeah, he has a thing for warmth. Okay. Yeah. I don't understand that. Well, One day you can teach me. Right. And Evie... If you really want to get rid of that smell, try a rosemary bath. It tends to uh, kind of win from any kind of other odor. Gotcha. I like rosemary. I appreciate that. Thank you very much, Tala. Our door is always open for you. Likewise on the other side. Good to know we have two homes. And uh, as and then you guys kind of gather up and depart and start to head back to meet with the other group. Um, with the other group, Abraham is. Oh, sorry, not you. You're you're with that. You're with the group that's that's walking back from the farm. Uh, Abraham. Yeah. Um. You would have been watching and keeping an eye on everything, and you kind of moved to a, a little bit into the woods so that okay. – um, what are you calling this dragon for short? Because I'm not going to say that. Lily. So that Lily can get down and kind of romp around and do things. So um, I'm going to distract it and play with it using a combination of minor you can say illusion. Her, it's not it. Has a name. Her. She. The... Thank you. They. Don't misgender our dragon, sir. When when X wants to do things, anyways, I'm using prestidigation and minor illusion to create sounds and sensory effects and uh, things for her to chase and attack and play. Kind of treating her a little bit like a cat with a lot of energy, mm -hmm. um, which she's probably way more intelligent for. So I'm, it's going to be a learning experience for both of us to find her boundaries and my boundaries and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And and she enjoys kind of hopping around and playing and doing stuff. And um, um, you start to get a sense, like during the, the big emotional conversation, um, you kind of get that tingle sense from uh, Roscoe, from uh, familiar Roscoe, mm -hmm. and it distracts you for a moment. Mm-hmm. Um, because you're like, I wonder what that's all about. He seems kind of panicked all of a sudden and, start and really at my concerned line through the door to the window. Yeah, and it. yeah, and you see the conversation and everything. You're like, oh, okay. When you come back, you don't see her, Lily. And then a moment later, real Roscoe f uh, flops down and flies out of a tree that's behind you. Mm -hmm. And then almost immediately after that, you hear a loud thud. As Lily had climbed the tree next to real Roscoe and attempted to fly and did a very bad job of it and flumped oh. from a 10 foot oh. branch. Look, and then she, Lily, Lily. And then she turns around and you can see the spine start to be very agitated as you, and you it's can okay. see her starting to swell up as she's about to no, death no, breathe the tree. A, it's nah. okay. No, 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 it's okay. It's okay. You don't have to. The tree didn't do it. The tree didn't do anything. Okay. He just okay. looks at you, and the, the spines calm down, and they start doing that hand wave thing when 
She's more happy. Well, and then yeah, um, there we go. You want Roscoe to Roscoe lands to next to her and she looks at him and she says, I'm, I'm, I'm. You want to fly too, huh? You want to fly up there? Hmm? She, you, she's looking at you and you get the sense that yes. Uh, can wormlings fly? Yes, they can. She just hasn't learned yet because she's a half day old. Right, right. So I'm just thinking, like, it's within her capabilities. I'm like, okay. Yeah. She, well, she, you, you see her watching Roscoe a bit more as Roscoe hops and flutters around, and she starts trying to, to hop show you. and flutter kind of back and forth a little bit. Um, yeah, and she, Use your she, legs. Push. push. Run. And use your arms. Yes, there. Now, you're winged at the same time. Yep. Yeah, so she's getting she's getting glides and little flumps, but she doesn't you get gotta use your legs. Push. You got to push yourself into the air. Then yeah. help yourself so, with, the, with, the, with the wings. <laughs> so this is what you guys come back to is uh, Gobs is sitting on the ground. Um, she's got she's playing on her phone uh, while Abe is haphazardly walking around this little clearing trying, trying to, to help. Get, as a two-legged creature trying to give a four-legged uh, winged creature advice on how to, how to fly. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So she's getting there. What are you doing? Hey, she's trying to fly. I can't stop her. She's going to throw herself out of a tree, then burn the tree, or desiccate the tree in front of me. I, I have to help her. Right, right. Um, maybe, maybe I can help? What can you do? He's not, he's not, not accusing of anything, he's just exasperated. <laughs> I can turn into something that flies, Abe. When, when you come back, Tala, she does hop over kind of towards you, doing that hop, half fly, and skids at your feet, and you hear the Dasha again in your mind. Your mother's going to teach you how to fly. I speak it to her in Draconic. She can turn into a creature and teach you. Watch her movements. Dasha, fly? Dasha, yes. fly? Yes. And, she, and this time she says Dasha out loud. And comes out that kind of croaking, gotcha, gotcha. She's saying it with her mouth for a change. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So all of you hear her say Dasha. So, uh, Otho, don't you speak Draconic? I do indeed. You you understand that she's saying Mother Tatala? Ah, oh, that is adorable. I did speak to her, the dragon in Draconic. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. So. All right. You, uh, so at this point, you guys kind of have your fun. You play around. I won't charge you for any wild shapes if you turn into a bird and try to help show her how to fly, things like that. Um, while you guys decide collectively, yeah. what are we doing next? What's the next move for the group? So you're just outside of Hilbrum on the north side of the river. Um, so about a year or so. What are you guys doing at this point? I'm turning into a giant vulture to teach the dragon how to fly. Excellent. Um, so let's say after all of that, so after you guys have had your fun trying to learn how to fly and you guys are settled down, the dragon gets gets settled back down where you can put her back in the sling. Um, what are you guys doing? All right, so... What's our plan now? Because we do kind of need one. Well, um, I don't exactly know. Well, we need a lot of metal. We need that to bring it back true. to Burkhorn. So, let's ask, see if anybody knows where metal is. What now... What's the next part of it? True well, gold? I don't know if anybody's been marking off what we've already collected. We have the living steel. The Beatorian green steel, I believe, was accounted for by the dwarf. True yes. gold is hard to get. He was... So, you got the living steel... 150 pounds plus, you got more of living steel. Um, you also, uh, he was able, to, uh, the job you did for 
um, his wife is what, and they, she offered you a deal to go find the murderers that she was being accused of these murders um, in the town. That was the whole cult thing that you guys did. Um, and for in exchange for that, she reached out to old contacts and she got the hundred pounds of Beatorian green steel that you guys needed. I have ninety, but okay. Then we need to find out where we can get. What is his agurk? Is his agurk or his agurk? Well, that's to. I mean, you can do. What kind of a check do you want to take? To figure out what that is. Mm, arcana. All right. Give it to me. Uh, his agur is an extremely rare metal that's derived from a mud-like clump that's found within the Underdark. Um, there's only a few people who can take that clay-like form. So it's kind of like, you know how sodium is kind of like clay? Sodium metal? Um, it's kind of like that, and it has to be refined in a very specific way to make it useful. So once it's refined, it's a pale silvery metal. And if it, do you guys have all the notes on how much of what you need? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's in the group notes. All right, making sure. I'll throw this in chat for the chat people, just in case. So uh, the Hizaker, you do not have adamantine. You still need 150 pounds of. You need 100 pounds of true gold, 25 pounds of orum, two heart stones, four sapphires, and 45 pounds of soul steel. Indeed. So, if nobody else has a plan, this is going to be a very Abraham moment. I love Abraham moments. Is that like having a senior moment? Yeah. But yeah, with explosions? Is. But with, like, potentially. So, I'm going to go to a rowdy inn filled with working folk. So not like a, I, I'm sure this is a, that that's the kind of town. But I'm just saying, like if there's like a nicer inn, we'll try the the not so nice inn first. The the tavern, the, the ale house. Yeah. So yeah, you could definitely ale find house. that, especially with this being such a country farm type area, mm -hmm. right? There's gonna be that dive bar, right? Okay. Uh, um, yeah. Where where you know the patrons get a little too handsy with the waitresses on the end of the when it's payday. Yeah, you know. because they're that kind of people and they work the hand hard jobs and. Yeah, they got their yep. hands. And, the and this is where they kind of cut loose and relax. Yep, I'm here. That's where I want to be. And well, I've got a plan. It's how I'm going to start off, and I'm just going to start marching that way. People follow me. They follow me. I got my birds on my shoulder. I got my mind floating behind me, like a right. drone monitoring my movements. And um, the dragon. I'm going to leave with Mama. Stay, stay, okay. with, stay with Mama. Daddy has to go talk to some people who are not nice. Daddy's going to mm -hmm. be fine. But you are too pretty. When you stay say that, the, the gems definitely cycle in a way that makes her... Like, it, it, I don't know what the emotion for blushing would be, but she's blushing. She, she's very happy when her daddy says nice things to her. Daddy Cluster? Glowing, yeah, and definitely um, some more some shininess to everything. Must. But yeah, she she's very happy about it. Then you have to clean but up yeah. when he comes back. So I don't want to clean you up. So you have to stay here. Okay, I'll be fine. Now you you, know, you stay here with Mama. I'm gonna go All right. take is care it, of business. Is anybody going with Abraham? Yes. Well, apparently I'm not. Somebody's gonna watch the baby. <laughs> No worries. 
Uh, I went out with my friends before. I guess I have to watch the baby now so you can hang out with your friends, too. See, there too. you go. I, I, I had baby duty a moment ago. It's my turn. Hey, uh, Gobs <laughs> actually taps on Nate's shoulders. Hey, um, why don't we let Tala go? Let's me and you watch the kid. I mean, I don't know what to do, but you know things that I don't. And, um, yeah, they could use Tala probably. She's a lot prettier than those two idiots. Well, thank you, Gops. Anytime. I know a cute girl when I see one. Or a cute dragon, apparently. Yeah, I saw how you looked at her. Not back at Ikaborzana. Hey, 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 hey. All right. I can admire art when I see it. All right. And that lady was art. But yeah, Talo, go, go ahead and go with them. I'll stay with the kid. Nate, actually, Nate, you can go too if mommy and daddy are okay with it. We'll just sit here and be nice to each other, and she's probably not going to eat me, right? As long as your arm is going to eat her. No. It's curious about her. There's some kind of... There's a weird kinship. There's something familiar. Orphans. No, it's more like the... The energy, there's a flow. If I was one of those hippies, I'd say it's like our chakras are similar. Vibin. Yeah. Yeah, the decay of the existence into nothingness in her kind of, there's something, something there. But we'll be all right. I'll keep an eye on the kid. All right. What do you say, Abe? Yeah, I suppose. Now listen to me, little Void. I care for both of you. I protected you because I wanted to see you grow. Both of you. Oh. I leave this to you. Watch out for each other. Mm. Gobs, watch out for both of them. Just watch out for each other. Yeah, no, we'll we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Okay, let's go. You just give me back my notebook when I get back, okay? Well, I think Nate's going with you now. Gobs and the dragon are staying behind. Unless Nate. Oh, I thought one. that Nate was also staying. Initially, I said yes, but N Nate, are you going? Do you want to go with them, or do you want to stay back? Nexus, if you're trying to talk to us, we can't hear you, buddy. Next. He's pooping. No. No, he's not. He's probably been trying to talk for the last 30 minutes and we just didn't know it. <laughs> it's exactly what it is. Uh, he feels man. like he's been talking over it. We, there was nothing, Nexus. Oh, man. No, yeah, we, we have not we been trying heard to it. shit on. No, yeah, I'm so sorry, Nexus. We we didn't mean to. You know, it is. Oh, there he is. What's up? What the hell? <laughs> Yay! There he is. Yay! Yay! Uh, all right, so, so time. We're we're we're, so we're, we're 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 break. Come on. So so, so now Nexus gets thirty minutes of talking time. Everyone, be quiet. <laughs> no, 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 no. no. <laughs> so let's Maybe do this. Or at the very time. least, fifteen minutes. Be, Let him talk. The only thing is. Uh, that no way in hell that uh, Nate is going to let uh, 
stops and the arm alone with a dragon the arm is clearly interested in. Yeah, I thought as much personally. Like, no way uh -huh. Nate's leaving that shit. Yeah, they, they, they'd both have to deal with my disappointment. You want Abe disappointed at you. <laughs> All right, so Nate's staying behind. Um, and, and we'll come back to that. So when you make it into town, because um, it is, at this point, it would be getting on into uh, evening. Um, so it's not hard to find the, the only place that has activity going on. Uh, so yeah, lots of farmhands. Um, there are some uh, mining activity because they go looking into... For, I'm looking for miners with an ER. Right. Good good people who dig ore out of the ground. Correct. Is what you're looking for. I'm looking yes. for people who extract yes. minerals from the earth. Yep. Big X-Men. I'm looking for I'm looking for rock and stone, all right? Yep. Um so no, I got gotcha. you. Good clarification though. I appreciate that. Not that I would have misunderstood, but you never know what people like to hear. Um so yeah, when you get in, you can obviously tell the farmers, the cowboys, and then there is a group of um um uh uh kind of humans and dwarves and a couple gnomes uh that you can see uh it, very likely with the proximity of Hilbrum to the outer edges of uh the desert in the south the desert of Kathul um they they probably go into those hills and mine there and hit some of those rocky things and try to find minerals and stuff they can use but yeah it's it's not too hard to uh find some uh, see a group of them sitting around a table kind of dirty they've got their hard hats just kind of slung over the the end of the chair the lip of the chair and just drinking and looking very disappointed in their choice of lifestyles <laughs> so here's the plan With absolutely no social graces whatsoever, I'm going to enact my plan. So this is just going to be, all right, go to the bartender. Where are they <laughs> drinking over there? Ale. Give me a picture of it. You trying to make friends? I'm trying to get answers. Out of that group? I need ore. Do you need a keg? Then give me a keg. All right. Um, half gold. I give him. I give him uh, fifty silver, or give him. I give him a whole gold and say, keep the rest of that. I may need to ask for some more things. All right. I'll put another keg in the chiller. All right. Get that wheel out to them and uh, they tip my hat or uh, give him a. Little silver. It's a, he sets he sets on the table one of those mini kegs. Oh, mini keg. Okay. Yeah, and oh, it's already perfect. it's already got the tap in it and everything. I bring it out to them, and it's like <clears throat> set it on the table. It's like, all right, boys, I need to buy an answer out of you. Who the hell are you? A traveling man with a lot of money and power, looking to get some ore. I'm coming to the people who know where the ore might be found. Yeah, if it's around here, we know where, where to dig for it. What are you after, old man? I have the birds uh, kind of stretch their wings. You know, Roscoe will stretch his wings and the mind will start floating around me. I have a list of things I'm looking for, but I don't know if you guys know where it would all be. It's pretty rare. Kind of putting on a performance, trying to pique their interest. You know where a man might find true gold? <laughs> they all just laugh. Like fairy tale, it's bull crap. Doesn't exist. <laughs> There's right, only one right. kind of gold, and it's the kind of gold I've got on my finger and in my teeth. All right, so you don't know where to find that. How about maybe something a little easier? Adamantine. Oh, adamantine. Yeah. Um. I mean, there's not much of that around here. Mostly here's iron and you know some brass and bronze, but um. You know, I heard up in uh, Feocian and the mountains of winter, they mine raw adamantine and then it gets sent down to the city to be refined. Out in the mountains, hmm? By the way, that's two answers, so you owe me two cups. Hmm? 
You're coming. Oh, that was not supposed to be with an advantage. I was checking whether or not he was bullshitting us about anything. Um, th- you get the impression from that 13. Uh, number one, they're not lying. Number two, uh, they think this guy's just a crazy dude who's going to give him free beer. So uh, they really do not believe true gold exists. Um, so, but yeah. Oh, okay. Um, is that it? No, 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 no. I'm thinking, I'm thinking as I'm reading a spell description. Sorry, Mr. Man. Um, here. There it is. I'm going to uh, cast Minor Illusion using just a quick uh, motion with my hand and using my spell book as the material component. And I'm going to start to glow all about my head in a halo, you know, just, just gently, just kind of radiating. Now, my friend, what do you tell me about Aurorum? Any Aurorum, Aurorum around here? And I got my mind floating around me, you know, the little little spectral dude. And it's kind of uh, rotating around me like a, an iron stone. Uh, look, we don't mess with ghosts, and Aurorum is like air metal. It doesn't... Mm-hmm. Not, you can't make metal from air. You're going to mine a cloud? I'm asking for what you know, my friend. I'm not asking for... I've heard it's a metal that... You know, the old stories... are. It's like true gold comes from heaven. Orum comes from the clouds. Mm-hmm. So in Adamine the clouds. tied as the bones of an evil god. Right? Mm-hmm. And where would the clouds be mineable? Where could you reach them? I... It, it's just a... Children's story, my my dad said. Anybody else have answers for me? I'm looking for soul steel as well. And I start sliding out gold across the table. And look, all right, we want the drinks, we want the stuff, but you're asking about things that are just from fairy tales, right? Soul steel, metal imbued with the souls of the condemned, right? Mm hmm. And where would you know of anybody who would know where that stuff is? Okay, let me back up here a second. All right. You know that old story about the half elf that comes down chimneys and gives good kids presents? Mm. Right? Once a year, if you've been good or bad, right? Okay. You're basically asking me where he lives. He's not real. But he is. Look I'm going to, at this point, uh, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, lean. I'm looking for the mm. stories, the I'm, ones that they whisper. I'm trying to help you. Um, I want. I'm gonna... I want from everybody who's paying attention to them. I want insight checks. Okay, so Tala, you're gonna notice it. Otho, you will notice it. Abraham, I assume an insight check's coming. Oh, I thought I was outside of it. I thought you said everybody watching this. Watching them. Watching the, oh, the people. The I'm watching this play out. Okay. Sorry. No. Them. Okay, you don't notice it. Um, so there, it's like a human, three dwarves, and a goblin. Um, the goblin, or not goblin, um, gnome. Um, the gnome, um, whenever you're asking a little bit more forcefully, he's kind of burying his face in the in the drink. Right. Like when the others are laughing, he's drinking to cover up his uneasiness about things you're talking about. So at that point, Tal is going to kind of lean into the gnome if I can go around and be on his side. Tal is going to let her 
do that and just let her just be quiet. And and just gonna very very quietly uh, say to him, yeah. So um, maybe you can just um, humor my client here. He's not very right in the head, and he's just looking for some yeah, fun asking stories. Asking about the things he's so, asking about. Of course, he's not right in the head. Tell your you friend to not bring him? up. Don't tell him to stop talking about soul steel. Right? Okay. The other stuff, I, yeah, the, all the stories are based on something. I don't know where to get him, but he needs to stop talking about soul steel. There's only one person who has that stuff. If it's stuff. as fake as they say it is, it's why is it so dangerous to fake. ask about it? Because it's not fake. It's just the person who has it isn't the kind of person you want to draw the attention of. So who has it? Who do you think? Marbon. Marbon's the only person who has it. It comes from... It comes from her territory. And he stole a bunch of it. Back before all of this was cut off. More specific. Barbon, the corpse singer, the guy who steals all the souls in the city when people die, keeps them from going to see the lady. The Raven Queen. Oh, you know who the Raven one. Queen is, right? Gotcha. Right? Prince Lord and Gilgamesh. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the Shadowfell, her place, that's where Soul Steel comes from because it's a metal that absorbs souls. You can tie souls to it. All right, and your buddy's talking about it, and if it even comes up, he's looking for it, then Marbon's little death-dealing gang's going to show up and t attach his soul to a bunch of it. So tell him to shut all up. Right, all right. All right? I will take my friend. What, o what other myths and legends are you idiots after? Hey, Abraham, what other things are we after? A lot. Does he know stuff? I don't. I don't he know knows anything. A lot of stuff. I don't know it. He's coming not, she's, with us. She's lying. I'm not. I'm not going anywhere. And the dwarf starts to stand and goes, "Hey, you leave Tommy alone. He's with us. He says he ain't going. He ain't going." We're not taking him anywhere. But he just told me quite some stuff while well, you were just sitting there talking to my friend here. And apparently, it's all hush hush. So we would like to talk to him in a quiet place, more no, quiet you, place. You, you than don't this. talk to Tommy without us. He's part of the union. It is all fine right? if you he, want to come with. But we don't negotiate with management. You have to go through the steward. There's about to be violence. There's not. <laughs> All right, so anything you can say to Tommy, you can say in front of us. So, right. what, so what would you guys like to do at this point? I mean, there's something I want to do, but it has vocal components, so it's not a good idea. No, <laughs> Nate, no. <laughs> All right, so what are we doing? Resisting the urge to cast a spell. Yeah, uh, I mean, the thing is, the thing I want to cast has a vocal component in it. If I use that, the others are going to know. Um, so. Hey. I Tommy did his right. time, and I'm not going to let you guys bully him. All right? He doesn't work for that chick no I'm more. not trying and if to you work him. for her, I then you, you go back to that city and you tell that black hag to leave him alone. Who? All right? Raven Queen. No, he didn't work for the Raven Queen. He worked for that Lupa. Thank you. Where is she? You don't know Lupa. All right, I no, think it's sorry, time. we're not hey, from the Tommy, city. Tommy, it's time. It's time for us to go. All right, I appreciate the free drinks. All right, but we're we're leaving. We're leaving. Come on, Tommy. Come I on. cut them off with thunderstep. That 
pop and clap. Everybody covers their ears and tables are pushed back and everybody starts to stand up. You hear the barbecue going, hey, hey, what's going on? None of that in here. As soon as that thunderclap happens, because it's loud, I'm going to cast Charm Person on Tommy. A thunderclap, thunderstep. I teleport in front of them. Yeah, it still makes a popping. Yeah, but it gives a thunderclap. Yeah, it still has a thunderclap sound. Yeah, yeah. Okay, go for it. So he has to make a wisdom saving throw, DC 15. Are you shitting me? Hey, hey, mm. this this one's trying to mess with me, Charles. This one's trying to mess with me. He points at you. He's all right, enough of that. And he's going to try to punch you, Tala. Oh. Thought I was going to be You made a mistake. Okay. Stop trying to hit me and hit me. <laughs> Yep, makes sense. <laughs> you take two points of damage as a dwarf punches you square in, because uh, he's short and can't reach. He tries to punch you in the face, ends up just punching you right in the tit. <laughs> in the tit. Yep, punches you right in your left boob. And he's like, oh, I didn't, I didn't mean to, you leave Tommy alone. <laughs> Answer the question, and we will let you leave. This whole problem is because you will not answer our questions. Everything here is because you've Abraham? disrespected us. Abraham? Every Abraham? Calm down. Escalated enough. Like I said, I just wanted to talk to you guys. And it's fine if you want to come with, but your friend Tommy over here knows things that we need to know. I'm gonna let this pass, let you hit me. I know, I also tried something that I shouldn't have tried. Sorry My for touching your boobs. I didn't I mean it magic. like that. Just to be clear. I can very much understand that. And since important, uh, I just a... have a short reach. Yeah. Um, so, let's it's start from big. the beginning. Got in the way. Can we please just talk to your friend Tommy. It's yeah. fine if you want to be there too. Yeah, we are please here. Please talk, talk to, to him. him and get some answers. Yeah, talk to him. He's right there. Now, Tommy, will you please just answer some questions for us? I, I answered your question. You didn't Where ask me another she? question. Lupa? The name. Where is she? I mean, she's in her quarter in the capital city. She runs... The Lupa's the person... She's the dragon that runs the Black Dragon District. She is the Black Dragon the district's named after. So all of our answers are either in the mountains or in the city. Look, all right? I used... My family used to work for her, all right? We dealt in exotic metals, Okay. Some of them were not exactly legitimately acquired, and some of them were not legitimately registered with customs. We got busted. I did five years for it, all right? I got out. I did my time, and I came out here to restart my life. I'm not trying to get back into the business, all right? And I'm not you trying to in drag here, you into it. I'm trying to get you're answers. You're Enjoy your about... beer. All right. You didn't ask me any questions. Look. I told you where she was. What it's, else do you want? You answered the questions we needed answered. And I thank you for that. We will leave you alone now. Is there anything we can do to compensate for the trouble? Yeah, leave the keg and leave me alone. And you didn't hear my name. If you go messing with Lupa, you're going to die. You understand that? Mm -hmm. I don't even know who you are. All right. She's she's called Lupa the Covetous for a reason, all right? And if you go poking around and asking about things like true gold and soul steel around her, if she thinks you have either of those, she will kill you and everybody you know to get it, all right? Do you understand? All right? It's very clear. Thank you. Thank you. That's our problem. Go away now. I leave. You came to us. I don't. Where can I, I go? <laughs> He's just babbling. As, as I leave. leave. Yeah. <laughs> once once again, just 
apologies for all this. It wasn't supposed to go this way, but it did. It's your fault that it went this way. Answer the questions next time. Abraham! Hey, because, because my buddy got a little fresh with you and you were nice to me, I'll tell you this. That little stunt he pulled, right? That works out here because there's nobody out here. He does that in the city, in the wrong neighborhood. All right? That's going to draw a lot of attention. And the one thing you don't want in the city is attention. Okay? So be careful. Good to know. And especially don't bring up, like, Orem, I've never seen. I know, in theory, all right, you asked about Orem. In theory, it comes from the elemental plane of air. Okay? There's some type of weird bird people that somehow pull metal from clouds. It doesn't make any sense to me because it's a pick. You metal in heat. Clouds don't work like that, but they do it. That's where Orem is said to come from. Okay? True gold only comes from heaven. That's, he, that's the story. There's a reason there's a story for it. All right? Between me and you, I've seen it. It exists. Good luck finding some. Soul steel. Like I said, I told you where it comes from, and I told you who's got the only set of it, because you can't get out. We can't get to the realms anymore, right? That's part of why we got cracked down on, because we were moving stuff that had to be registered, because it was so rare, extra rare, since the portals closed, okay? All right, does it all make sense now? Can you tell your grumpy right. friend not to try to blow me up or anything? I will definitely do that. Thank you very much for your all right. Thanks for the beers. Boy, that was interesting. I'm just going to drop another uh, 40 gold on the table for them Jesus. to divide amongst their shelves because of this. They're going to drink themselves to an early hey, grave over the, here. The, the dwarf looks at that and goes, well, if I knew you were throwing around that kind of gold, I would have punched you another one too. <laughs> That is because you actually answered stuff. If you do that again, you're going to lose your head. Have a good day, and then I leave. I don't know. That kind of girl might be worth losing a head over. Huh? And he elbows the other guy, and the, the other door just starts. He was trying to look surly the whole time. He just kind of cracks his smile. He's like, all right, let's sit down and finish this gag off. And they all start laughing again. Just guys being dudes. Yeah. Yeah. The bartender is like, hey. You guys can't come back here. I don't like roughing up of, and you just ignore him as you walk out. And he's like, <laughs> so, all right. So you guys head out. And as you guys head out of the town um, and head back to meet up with Gobs, um, I think that's where we're going to end this week's session. Seems like a plan. Yep. Uh, so you guys meet back up with Gobs. Um, Nate is very much stressed out because Gobs is now has made friends with, uh, the dragon and is running around and and, and like he gobs is throwing like a stick up in the air and then squeezing her so she breathes to desiccate the stick and that's what you that's the scene you come back to as Nate running trying to catch gobs who's now running with the dragon who is uh very happily uh desiccating anything that gobs tries to point her out to and squeeze Why? So, I'm I'm happy that that's the reason why he's panicking and not a different reason. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So, and that's the scene, and that's where we'll end this week. Again, everybody who's who's who watched along, um, um, I don't. Ha yeah, it should be. It should be. If I had it loaded, I would totally play Yakety Sax right now. But. I um, appreciate you guys watching along. Feel free to uh, check out the YouTube channel. Again, it's at SoundScream6802, or if you search for Dinosaur Party, you should be able to find it. It's also linked on our Twitch channel. Like, subscribe, comment, all of that kind of stuff. That all helps us out. We appreciate it. Uh, but other than that, appreciate you guys, and we will see you all next time. Woo!